Okay, so I'm calling the uh, Planning Commission to order, and at eight, uh, 1804, <laughs> um, Announcements. I don't care. Oh, I, <laughs> I do. Um, so, the town has hired a sustainability coordinator. Um, it's Stephen Dotson. He has uh, lived in the area for a little bit, a couple of years. Um, he's been doing a lot of work as a consultant and contractor with various organizations in town. Um, he will be starting February 3rd. Super excited. It was really, really strong field of over 75 really qualified applicants. So, um, yeah, there was a uh, there were a couple steps in the process. Um, on the hiring committee was the town manager, myself, um, Steve Barrett, who's director of public works, uh, Liz McLaughlin and David Scholes from the select board, Oscar Heller, who uh, is chair of the energy committee, and um, Elizabeth Bridgewater from Women Windsor Housing Trust. So um, I feel really good about the decision and we're really excited for Stephen to start. He's um, got a broad range of skills um, and perspectives on sustainability, so um, there's community building as aspects, there's the energy, um, there's agriculture and transportation, so we're very excited. What was he working on just before this or presently, if anything? He'd been, um, I'm not sure if I have it exactly right, but he'd been associate director at Rich Earth Institute. Mm -hmm. Um, he's been consulting with Brattleboro Savings and Loan um, on their B Corp stuff, so maintaining their B Corp status. Mm -hmm. um, he's worked at One Report, um, which they pulled together, I think, a bunch of sustainability metrics on, for businesses to mm -hmm. help them. Um, yeah. uh, he's volunteered, he's a Women Regional Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, he's been working on a sibling. Um, sibling project where like this area would partner up with a community in Sweden to okay. exchange ideas. Um, yeah. So. Hmm. Well, ideas we can get from there. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure yeah. how many we can implement. How many we can implement. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I maybe have an announcement. Um, this is a while ago um, that we got a follow-up. Some of us got a follow-up letter from the um, specifically James Levinson from the signpost idea mm -hmm. that was one of the applicants oh, mm -hmm. and I guess he was just writing to try to see if there's anything else we could do. I wrote an email back saying I'd bring it up at the next meeting but the Better Block Challenge is over and sorry didn't yeah. work out for them and that you know will will be reminded of you and maybe mm -hmm. something will come again in the future. One of the things that um recently has come up that I think maybe we should send their way is the Town Arts Fund. Oh. Um, that might be a source of funding that they could look towards. Mm -hmm. um, those applications I think are due January 10th, so. Um, okay. Town Arts Fund. That might, might be good. Um, I'll send that email, I guess, too. Okay. You can look it up and you'll find okay. a link to the application. I'm not sure who would be designing their son, but if they could incorporate an artist into it. I think those are for grants up to 5000 Okay. Well, so. Could be a billboard. Oh, it's not allowed in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Put it right over in his chair. Uh, other announcements? A stepsister community. Um, yeah. <laughs> public comments. I am the public. You are the public. <laughs> Would you like to comment? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, approval of the minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? Any questions? Comments? I guess, I, do I need to make a motion to approve them before we can have comments? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All right, is there a second? second? So, comments, additions, corrections, changes. They look good to me. You have to insert the date or a time. Insert time here, it says. Oh. <laughs> um, I will. Okay. 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. <clears throat> Answer approved. Um, all right, we're, there's a shift in our agenda. We're going to do the neighborhood development area designation uh, in advance of the downtown design plan because Andrew has to go. All right. Yeah, so thanks for being flexible. I have to fill in for Brian for development review board tonight. Which is at 7. You don't mind if I, I don't want to be able to control you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so um, I guess before I came in uh, to the town, Sue um, and, and Brian, I guess that was just Sue, you and Brian at the time were thinking about getting something called the Neighborhood Development Area designation, which is another state kind of designation program, kind of like how we have our downtown that's designated and also West Barlboro Village. This is another kind of designation. Um, so kind of the background. There's 159 state designations throughout the state of Vermont, ranging from village centers to growth centers. Um, there's kind of the core designations, which is village center, downtown, or new town center, and then the neighborhood development area is an add-on to that. So kind of a quick overview. Um, basically, similar to downtown, in terms of the benefits you get, um, it kind of really reduces the time, the cost of state permitting in those areas uh, that are within an easy walking distance of another state designation like our da designated downtown. Um, and then areas also uh, that are compact and have services. Um, the municipalities or developers, so private or public entities, may use their, the designation to encourage the creation of new homes and uh, development ready locations. Um, and then basically the designation has to go to existing municipalities that have existing designations like us. So this is kind of like the meat of why we, we want to get an NDA, is the benefits that come with it. Um, starting with qualified mixed income projects. So mixed income means not just affordable, it's all sorts of income. Um, are exempt from Act 250 regulations, which is huge. That's a lot of money developments can save. I mean thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Hope so. Uh, say again? I mean, you're probably going to answer this question. <laughs> all right. Um, in our uh, wastewater uh, reviews are capped at $50. That's another um, cost that's saved. Um, municipalities receive priority consideration for state grants, so other opportunities to really expand and um, create housing. Um, and then for properties that do have an existing Act 250 permit, um, there's no permit or amendment that's required. And then um, for a mixed income project, again, that meets um, underlying permit conditions um, toward regulations in place. Um, there's exceptions from land gain tax, um, and then Act 250 projects not qualifying for exemption do receive um, a 50% discount. So for example, Red Clover Commons 2, which will be going in in a few years, um, they would receive, um, if they did not apply yet for Act 250, they would receive a 50% discount, which would save them, I think, like $12,000 or something. Um, and then a local conditional use decision that a housing project meets the character of the area criteria, it cannot be appealed by like a neighbor, for example. If it met administrative review by Brian DRB. Yep. So, yeah, that's kind of the so very similar to downtown designation benefits. Um, it really creates opportunities for new housing. I know we aren't growing right now, but if we have something like this in place, it really um, it's we're being proactive. So, if growth does come eventually, we have the programs in place to address it. Can you explain what land gains tax is? Um, I'll do my best job. I'm not sure, Sue, if you know. Mm. I, <laughs> can I get back to you? <laughs> <laughs> she can answer. <laughs> Thank I you. I mean, I'm do, just wondering. Randy, do you yeah, know? I, know. I, yeah, I figured you probably would know. <laughs> um, it, if you uh, have a property transaction, and I, I think there may be a number of years that go along with it as well, and I don't know the deal with the number of years. Um, and you sell, it, it's to stop people from turning uh, properties over quickly. So I think, I think if you means. hold it less than a certain number of years and you make a profit when you resell, you have to pay taxes on the amount of your profit. Mm -hmm. It's like capital oh, gains. Yeah, like a capital it's like capital gains, gains yeah. tax. But I can't tell you what the year numbers are that go along with it, but that's the, the idea. Great, thank you. Randy. Stop that horrible real estate investment in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm curious how it can uh, be exempt from Act 250. Um, well, it's again, it's for areas that are, you know, are that the state feels or that you know we also feel should have new housing development or should be you know developed in a more compact neighborhood development pattern, which uh, 
Well, there there is. I mean, we should be careful with that because yeah. there you'll see there is a criteria. It's supposed yeah. to be within a half a mile yeah. walking distance was, of yeah, the designated downtown. Yeah. So because it adds on yeah. to the downtown designation, it's not something that you can even do on the village. No, you can. You, you can. Yeah, it's just a different buffer. Different buffer. Yeah, di Quarter different. Mile. Yeah, quarter, quarter mile. mile. Right. Yeah. Well, we might so, need to revisit that. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's really for areas that are, you know, within walking distance of the services, again, so trying to create more walkability and, you know, like when I get to the application process, there's a whole complete streets framework that, you know, they want towns to follow. And and the wastewater review is, kept, can you explain why, what, why that is a benefit? So just, um, it's another fee that, like you know, you know, developers, you know, how, you know, soft costs and hard costs. It's a, a soft cost, mm -hmm. um, and it's just another. You know, obviously, you know, they go through us, and then they, yeah. you know, they have two fifty, and then they have to go through A and R for wastewater, which is just all developments have to do it, and that can also add up. So it's just you know, fifty dollars is pretty cheap. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty cheap, but that doesn't mean they're cutting corners in terms of their mm -hmm. reviews or, or yeah, dealing no. with their wastewater. No, it's no. They still have to getting go. rid of duplicative review. Oh, it is. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. Or the review happens, but you only have to pay 50 yes. instead of whatever the normal, right. whatever well, the normal the fee happens, is. Well, the review happens, but it's yeah, capping yeah. the fee at 50 instead of hundreds or something. So, um, I mean, for many people, when they see it, like, you know, don't pay for Act 250, that's a pretty good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, not saying it's bad. I mean, I think Act 250 does have its benefits, but really? it could be expensive. Um, so for example, just to give you an idea of Act 250 fees, when Red Clover Common 1 uh, was built, that was about $22,000 in Act 250 fees. Fees? Mm -hmm. Yes, to get their state land use permit. And, and that's yeah, an add on. To be able to do anything after that, and, and that's, that's an add percent of the of the value of the development or something. Mostly, I or? don't recall how they calculate yeah. that. Do you know how Act Two Fifty Fee is? I think it actually might. I be think it is. A, I think it is. Yeah. Think so, yeah. So you know, you have so they go through us, they pay our fees, and we also you know it could be up to ten thousand or more sometimes, and then they go to Act Two Fifty, and then so yeah. Hmm. And oops. do you want us, are you expecting action or are you just informing? So we want to approve, we want to apply for this designation and submit in February because we see it as a kind of a no brainer. We think our land use regulations are where they need to be and, and we can meet all the requirements. Um, we are asking for an extension of the half mile radius around the designated downtown. Um, and we'll show you on the map, and we can justify why. So we just think that it's it's a pretty, um, it's kind of a no-brainer mm -hmm. if it can <coughs> give anybody who might want to develop in this area, you know, some, some relief from Act 250 mm -hmm. or some, just other state permitting fees, then it didn't seem like, it just seemed like a low cost, because yeah. there's kind of no cost for us to, to do this. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it encourages housing, too. And um, so, going to the map, this is our proposed NDA, and as you can see, that's the half mile buffer. And another, some reasons why we're extending to kind of the canal, north of Canal Street, and, um, or just a, before uh, exit one, is because, as you can see, almost half of the buffer is in New Hampshire, and there's the Connecticut River. And then we also have a lot of natural constraints, like steep slopes, especially in this area right here. And we already have a lot of existing, really developed neighborhoods. Um, so, most of it obviously is in the half mile buffer, but then we're looking at, like, you know, Josh, where you lived on Generous Street, and then there's fairgrounds, and then where a lot of the services are existing, and then obviously there's the hospital as well that's right there. Yeah. And that's what I think I have. Yeah. So you can see, I mean, it's it's really built for maybe redevelopment of these areas or infill, yeah. particularly, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, in the price market. 32 area or you know, who knows outlet center. I mean, who, who, we don't really know. It's not like there's a lot of large vacant parcels to be developed there, but it's really just preparing in mm -hmm. case yeah, there and, was. To be you know, they wanted to just say that one of that you know the plaza with the price shocker was transformed into like a mixed use development in years to come or something. 
you know, very, you know. Yeah. And it, you know, another thing is too, like this area is also serviced by water, which is important. And I have some additional maps I'll show you that show the facilities that are located. Any questions regarding the proposed NDA changes or? Do they do extensions, like a physical uh, mileage extensions or whatever? Are we trying to do like a half mile radius or bring it up to three quarter mile? Is no, there isn't really any specifics. It just, you know, there, well, there the is, I mean, so, you know, basically the area that we're going to extend should be consistent with the statewide planning goals. Um, uh, but I mean, you're, you're allowed to just like extend it? If we can, fall, if, if our, can certain conditions are met. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. You know, does the extension represent a logical extension of existing development, for example? Uh, so, yes, we can. Um, is there a consideration for the village of West Brattleboro? Well, no. no there has there not hasn't been, been but and um, I think we definitely do <laughs> to consider that. I'm going to confess that that was off the radar, that you could extend it on a village center. Because when we met with the state, that was not... The discussion that we yeah. had. Oh. Um, so that's that's my fault. Um, the one thing that you should know is you cannot the floodplain cannot be included yep. in it. So <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily help so out how we, like, Terrace just right now. But it, would but it could help Shillet. out. It could help out Down Chalet for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. And eventually, it could help out the Melrose Melrose Terrace when properties it's when it's when the map has been. Relaxed. And is this not? Is it connected in any way to village center designation? It does in that the area has to be contiguous to mm -hmm. a state designation, so village center or downtown. So we could not go and put this up on Putney Road with a yep. village to the center downtown. designation or a, or a downtown, downtown designation, designation that yep. it attaches okay. to. Yep. Gotcha. So essentially the benefit is a ta tax breaks, permit breaks. Permit breaks, yep. a little bit of the Yep. And, then, and, the, the and then more consideration, more priorities for grant opportunities as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. For, okay. It does not extend like the historic tax credits mm -hmm. or any of those mm -hmm. at this time. Okay. So it would make sense in terms of West Brattleboro to first, if possible, we were talking about ex broadening the village center designation first and then doing this. But we were talking about extending the village zoning district, not the village center designation. We were talking about both originally, okay. as I, I remember all the village center designation. That's because of tax process. credits. Okay. Right. Which is a different yeah. process. But a different process. Yes. Right. But that would be then yeah. after the zoning change, which it hasn't changed yet. Not yet. So yeah. once the zoning change and then talked about yeah, that is an option. We could okay, yeah. great. Okay. We could look for and then we the then this like the order. Okay. What are the potential negatives? If any, <laughs> I don't see any. I mean, I don't see any myself right now. I mean, there's only a few. There's only like a couple towns, mostly in Chittenden County, that have done it. I mean, we really would be the first in Southern Vermont to do this. Um, but obviously. We see more of these kind of designations in those areas because they are seeing some growth. Is there? Can you give us an example of one that's gotten it and then done the development so we can actually? See well, I know that Winooski has a designation. Um, in terms, oh, I mean, developments have happened after. Yeah. Uh, not exactly, but I can look into it. I'm yeah, I don't. Now since I don't I'm really made some connections in that area, so I can contact some people. See what I, can get. I mean, it would be cool to see. Yeah, if, no, of if course. Somebody had done I think um, really interesting the only other thing I would say. So one example would be Putney. So, so we're going for this um, neighborhood development area boundary, um, where we're going for a whole area. You can do a site-specific mm -hmm. designation, and so Putney Landing, which is the affordable housing complex off of Exit Four that Wyndham Windsor Housing Trusted, they went and did a site specific there, I think for the reduction of the fees at 250 in the wastewater. So that's an example. I mean, it, it's not necessarily going to, you know, it didn't spur that development, but it helped make that project 
more financially feasible mm -hmm. by knocking down those fees. So that was the one example that they gave us. I think, um, and I'm think you know, as we talk, like if there was to be a development sooner rather than later out in West Brattleboro attached to the village center, that's we could go so for a site specific yeah. oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. designation. And then I think it's kind of a temporary thing. It didn't get the impression that it, well, maybe it stays with it, but. You can, if you know you've got a housing project going in, you could seek that site for some. I do know the Champlain Housing Trust uses it a lot in Chicken County. Yeah. So the bunch I of think it is the housing trusts that are primarily that are primarily used because of the fees. Yeah. 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 Well, and so they're doing it for individual sites when they do a project. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Isn't it? Um, aren't, aren't a lot of things in a town like Brattleboro exempt from Act 250 already because well, our down, downing? Mm -hmm. Because it depends. Uh, um, well, we do have zoning and subdivision regulations, but when you're talking about a project that like the Housing Trust or the Brattleboro Housing Partnerships are going to do, they're creating a certain number of units, which know, does trigger Act 250. So Red Clover Commons had more than the number of units to, right. that are required, so they, they do need an Act 250. It's not, acreage is not the only. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not the only. Right. So then, would we want to do something, or would anyone want to do something like this on a smaller scale within Brattleboro? You know what I'm saying? Like, because in effect, if, if this long term and if more places in the state do this, all the areas outside of the zones are will have their fees increased to kind of subsidize the areas within, and that's all right if we value this, you know, um, smart growth and, and dense growth. And if we were to do something like this, but since those other areas are like the rest of the state, it's like kind of all just a benefit for us as an individual town without much drawback. But if we were to do something like this within our town, are you talking I'm about a town policy? Own, a town policy. Yeah. That are then the rural like people would be like, oh, our fees are going up to subsidize. The reduced fees in the town, but that's not what we're doing. I'm just saying that's it makes well, me think. Is that is that a, would that happen? I mean, is Could we is, do that? is the state saying, oh well, we're we're taking so much of a loss on these neighborhood designation projects that now we're going to well, charge more in our fees for other Well, I don't know that they the view it that way. I mean, I, I think I they're trying think to spur development, and so yeah. I think they view if if they can, you know, yeah, I also increase the housing. I, you know, I, also, I mean, we'd have yeah. to ask them in that manner, but I didn't get yeah. the impression that they're looking to raise fees no, yeah. somewhere else to help subsidize yeah. development that might be happening in these areas. I think they're trying to spur development. Yeah. But, it, but it's it's really actually a, a question worth asking because mm -hmm. if the if an unintended consequence is that, yeah. that rural development becomes more expensive. Well, I th also think they're just they're trying to put the housing where it should be, you know, in more of the urban areas. I don't think they're trying to, you know, in any way. The program isn't intended to raise prices for rural areas, at least from what I've read. Mm -hmm. But we can look into that further. I mean, I think it is a valid question. I mean, I guess it would. It depends on if the state budget says we're going to get so much money out of Act 250, mm -hmm. and uh -huh. if they come in shy, then they raise their fees. I don't know that that's ever know. been done yeah. before, do you know? I, I, mean, I would say that they have a long ways to go before this becomes a problem. I yeah, think yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you had that problem with current use because it's that popular of a yeah. statewide program. But yeah. uh, right. these neighborhood development areas have not taken off, and yeah. actually, in most areas, there's just there are good reasons why they're not going to. And so, because they don't have the infrastructure and the yeah. water and sewer. Right. Oh, okay. um, so, I don't think they're going to, to burn through this, their coffers very quickly. <laughs> so the point is, is to induce development in developed areas. Yes, the development, yeah. It's yeah. really meant for the areas that are ready for it. Yeah. Or have the, like a, the infrastructure. So then do, we, you, do you need us to approve you doing this? Well, yeah, so um, I guess to give you a little timeline, so this is kind of a, a task list of what I've been doing for the application. Um, making great progress. I mean, if we want to aim for February, I mean, I should really be done with this in, in, by the end of the month. Um, we basically we met with them already. We got a confirmed letter from uh, Wyndham Regional. Um, all these are just the different components. Um, I, I'm going to show you some of the maps I've been working on. But uh, yeah, we're, we're moving along pretty smoothly. 
We don't need a formal vote. I mean, it could be nice yeah. to have a vote. Um, we were going to take this to the select board just to kind of keep them apprised as to what we're doing, but it's not like a requirement mm -hmm. of the application oh, or anything okay. like that. Okay. It's more of this is a planning tool, so we thought we'd bring it before the planning commission and also let the select board know what's going on. Okay. But if you wanted to take a vote in support, that is nice too. Um, so yeah, so there's some mapping requirements um, just for the application, and these are in progress. Some one of them is to map some of the you know uh, natural resources, so uh, endangered rare species. I still got to figure out what species exactly are in this area, uh, wetlands, um, and then of course the, the flood zones. And there's some still in the area. I mean, as you can see, Brownboro has a lot of natural constraints, so no matter what, we're gonna hit something. But um, and then these are the slopes that are greater than 25 percent. Yeah. So a lot of this area, I mean, even though it's kind of in that designation, is you know part of you know the retreat and the retreat trails. So we wouldn't really be developing there anywhere. It's just within that boundary. Um, and then this is the facilities map. So we got you know sewer lines. Um, it's hard to it's hard to see. I'm sorry. There's sewer infrastructure, transit lines, um, public facilities um, like you know the hospital. Um, school, uh, trails, and then I'm working on a map with someone from Public Works with planned facilities because that is also another map. Um, and then the next one, um, areas that are appropriate for residential development, which is basically just, the, I just showed the zone, the residential zones that are in that area, like residential neighborhood, um, neighborhood center, and then the mixed use center, and then the the density that's allowed in those zones because that's another component of the application is that we have to meet a certain density that's already in our regulations and we surpass it so we're good there um, we do have an historic district that's in uh, that would be within the um, NDA which is like Clark Street and then um, yeah. yep and then um, the proximity obviously to our downtown designation Still working on these. Uh, other than that, any other questions? Can you go back? Sure. Um, what's this? Why is that out? Why is that not right? Oh, because this is the the designation, the downtown. Oh, oh it's technically oh, oh, not oh, part okay. of the okay. NDA. Yep. Okay. Can you go back one more map? You got it. Page? The brown. What is that? Endangered uh, species. So it, endangered slash rare species live or been found in this area. Like houses. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I gotta get in touch with um, I might have fish to and wildlife or, or yeah, I might, yeah. I might have it's in your backyard. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be birds, it could be birds no, or insects, it could be, even it like could be vertebrates, yeah. it could <laughs> yeah, be vertebrates, yeah. rare uh, rare flowers or plants. Yes, um, flora or flora. Yeah. Well, I just learned about the kettle pond. Yes, yes. The kettle pond is probably right there in the middle. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, where is that? Oh yeah, it's, but, um, but it's not it's been treated Wilson's well at all. Is no. that from a glacier, a glacier's pressure, or something? I think. Or what what is is we to talked about this in our conservation, the conservation commission. Now. But apparently, it's all there's all like sorts of runoff from yeah, the yeah, parking lot. Yeah, parking lot. Yeah, it's all just and Canal Street. And yeah, yeah. I just went to a meeting where they're highlighting that the state is a very high priority area for remediation of stormwater. So you're hmm. right there. Yeah. You know where it is. Yeah, no. I, mean, I, I had a duck that flew in there one time. And I had to go get her out of there. Oh. <laughs> That's how I discovered it. Did you feel salty oh. afterwards? I guess it's pretty, I didn't get pretty, pretty highly. I didn't get in it. I coaxed her back. Yeah, yeah it's not a good shit. <laughs> it's not a good shit. Um, that you got. Yeah, so that's it. That's what we've been working on. and Yeah. We see it as a positive for the town, but obviously we really appreciate your feedback. I see it as a positive. Yeah, you know, like obviously, I always worry about like the the fallout or the aftermath, mm -hmm. or, you know, like the, the negatives that we didn't see, foresee. Mm -hmm. You know, like five years down the road, like ooh, uh, is it something we can uh, reconsider in the future if there is? Well, um, I'll tell you this: that you do that. have to go for like, every five to eight years it has to be uh, renewed. Okay. So, yep. I guess during that time we could reconsider. Yep. It does have to be renewed. Yep. Just oh. like any other designation does. Yep. Yeah, it looks just like benefits to me. Yeah. And okay. when and if development pressure comes, yep. we'll be right. 
more attractive well, for it. Well, isn't it? I mean, we do, we do, we would like more housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so mean, we still have a housing problem in town, right. so. Yeah, this seems like part of that. Because it, it is an emphasis on housing. Yep, and, not, and, and it's an emphasis not just on like affordable, but all, all, kind of all kinds of housing. Good. Cool. Yep. Great. That's it. Thank you, Andrew. Thank That's you. Perfect. Ready? Okay. Next. Okay. Do you have your report, Brandy? Hmm? Do you have your report? Um, I have my. Or I have my business. Can what, you just what, use? What, what you got? I have an HDMI. Yeah, can you use this? Oh, there's, okay. there's one in each hallway. Yeah. Yeah. Water. Can I? Oh, do you need yeah, water? Yeah, we have a water thing in there, but there's a water pump around. Yeah, there's cups. There are cups right here. Um, I'll get it. Do you want to go in there? Doesn't look that scary. So you all got the email with the results? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got to look at it for this. Thank you. We're going to talk about it, so. Fantastic. Yeah, really interesting. So interesting. Are they, um, are they, are they going to be available online? What? These? So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, actually they're getting integrated into the, um, story map. Okay. As well. Yes. I was just thinking for the if anybody ever watches these television shows, mm -hmm. um, that they might actually. I can put this in. document up. Yeah. yeah. Soon later. We can get up tomorrow. Are we waiting for? Sure. There he is. I'm trying to think. I, I I don't know that I did put this on the project website. I've still got the videos to put links up to and and this. So. Yeah. So but we can. Um, I can get it on there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tonight's agenda is to look at the survey results and then uh, look at the structure of the product that I'm working on, the story map, um, give you a sense of what I'm envisioning and an opportunity to provide some feedback while it's still in um, sort of the progress of being developed. And I have a few specific um, things that I want you guys to give me some feedback on um, as well in terms of what some of the priorities and focus things we should put more time into versus less time so we can talk about that but so the survey um, ended up uh, getting a really good um, amount of response so you ended up with uh, 564 um, responses um, to the, the public space survey um, and gave you some bit of a demographic break, break ground, breakdown. The one odd thing, and I, I, I think it's relevant to looking at the rest of the survey results, and this has actually never happened to me before with a survey, um, the respondents to the survey were predominantly female, um, so the ratio is not anywhere near 50-50 um, of respondents. Um, so that's where we are. Um, you can see the breakdown. So, oh, wow, yeah. yeah. So this, the no response. So twenty percent we don't know. Twenty percent we don't know. I mean, if you assume that even if you assume that that's all male, it still isn't a fifty-fifty sort of right. breakdown. Right. I mean, and it's assumably no response is not entirely one hundred percent men. So, um, I I don't know what this um, what what more to draw from this, but. Um, Hmm. It's the first time this has ever occurred in my uh, surveying uh, career here, so there we are. I thought it was a high number of respondents from Brattleboro as well, at 69%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's good to see that. Yep. It's not like it was yeah. primarily people from out of town. No, I mean, we did hear from some, some folks, um, and obviously mm -hmm. a couple of the, when we were distributing the survey during some of the events and stuff, I think we were getting a little more traffic from people who were out and about, but um, yeah, primarily from, from people in Brattleboro and then, you know, nearby. Hmm. So, one other question was to ask, ask people for three words to describe um, downtown 
uh, Brattleboro. This uh, ends up reflecting the range of what I heard. I did do some combining of very similar terms to try to give a sense of the um, weight um, of the concept, basically the basically the same ideas. So um, there might have been both, you know, beautiful and pretty. And I, there were more beautifuls and there were a few pretties. I included the pretties with beautiful, um, that type of thing. So you can get some sense. The larger um, the typeface, the more uh, people use that term. Um, so, you know, you're seeing a mix here of, of positive and, and negative perceptions. Uh, I don't think it's, it's that surprising. Um, what people are concerned about um, in downtown. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? What creative, the word creative is small. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, there was not a lot of I, I artsy. Think, artsy. Artsy. I think I combined, there was a few people who used the word creative, and I think I ultimately combined that one into the artsy uh, grouping because it was just two or three. And there okay. was a lot more people who used the word artsy. The word artsy. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So the big ones are lively, friendly, unsafe, and beautiful? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So the specific question was what words describe downtown? Yeah, I asked, yes, you know, list three words that you would use to describe downtown Brattleboro. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do know that some youth took the survey because they said it was boring. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Documentation. I don't know. I didn't go back and fact check that. I just made that up. But I think it's boring in there. Um, <laughs> equal to fun, though. So did, did any of the, did, was there a follow-up that would help people or help us to understand, like, inaccessible? Mm. What, um, what was we, but we, we do have the open-ended questions that follow. And um, one of the things that you definitely see in the open-ended um, questions is accessibility coming up, that people have difficulty um, getting around um, Brattleboro, either because of mobility issues or because they have small children and they feel that it's challenging given the parking situation and the traffic situation to get them safely from one point A to point B. Um, so those, those types of accessibility things is what I think people are using. Hmm. More than more. Hmm. Okay. So then we got into the series of questions about how frequently come, people come downtown and why they come downtown. Um, so that was was definitely, we heard from people who are here quite a bit, so daily or weekly in downtown, those are primarily the, the folks who responded um, and did give that a bit of a breakdown on age and um, gender categories as well. Um, and then why are people coming downtown? This lines up pretty well with what you got from the parking survey, which asked sort of a similar question. You know, coming downtown for food, to go out um, for shopping, for events. Um, and we did not hear from any people who are living downtown. I think we tried hard to reach them, and I, I don't know that we actually mm -hmm. managed to hear from a lot of people who are living downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and not for a lot. Of, and people are not coming downtown for sort of recreational reasons. You know, to go. You know, going for a walk, going to a park, that type of thing. Those are down at the bottom. There. I can give you the printed copy. Okay. Um, so asking people, we we had the list of the um, of these seven um, spaces. So the Wells Fountain courthouse space, the municipal library space, Pliny 
um, the Church Street Park, the Whetstone Pathway, Plaza Park, and then on Depot Street, um, and ask people, you know, which of these places offer these elements, so places to sit and rest, places to meet and talk, things to see, activities, places to, for activity and play. You know, those are some of the list, the, the items of what makes a, for good public space. So we ask, we're basically asking, do you think that these have those components of good public space? And, you know, they're not particularly high here on these percentages. Pliny Park probably does the, the best out of uh, this grouping in terms of, of offering some of those, those elements. Um, but, and as we go along and look at the follow-up um, slides and we start, asking, you know, when people, more, more about each place, each park specifically, there's a lot of people that just even aren't familiar with them. They don't go to them at all, or don't know of them, or, you know, have reasons why they don't go to them. So, uh, I think that's, that's interesting as well. And then, so that question around the, what do public spaces offer you, was followed up by an open-ended question that said, is there anything else? these spaces offer you and people could just write in um, a response. Um, I did um, tag all those responses based on the themes that were in them. Um, so you can see these were some of the most common um, uh, I put the positive ones up here at the top around green space. Um, that was really high. People really want to see green spaces and preferred those. That came out in the visual, the pro photo preference survey as well. Um, you know, people, the, the, the flowers downtown got um, mentioned, you know, events and activities, that kind of thing. But a vast, you know, a l much larger percentage of the comments focused on the problems in these spaces right now. And I mean, you can see that the, the, the the first one there, drugs, drinking, addiction, sort of grouping of, of comments. More people, that was a, the, the comment, that's the, the category that got the most comments. Mm -hmm. um, and, and is obviously a, a large concern. And many people, you know, said that they were concerned about this as a problem and then said that there were also positive things. You know, so it's not like it's, it was, people were entirely negative, but there was a fairly um, substantial level of concern with these these issues and problems in the public spaces. What was the date of the survey? We we opened the survey up in September, and it ran through the end of Octoberish. So it was it was a good it was open and available for s seven weeks or so, I think. What stood out to you on this the most, and the the negative comments? Um. I think the 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 breadth of that being the top concern that people have, and it, it, it comes up even more in the sort of general yeah. comment question that comes in at the very end. Yeah, but, I saw that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think even the people who 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 see a lot of positive in downtown, they were still expressing concerns as well. So I think the kind of ubiquity of that starting to come up in the comments um, is, mm. is something. So, and I tried to here and in the other sections, tried to pull some of the, the comments and include them directly so you can get a chance to read them. I know you can't read them on the screen here, but, um, to, and I tried to give you a sense of the range of the types of comments that were, were there. Um, so you can, um, get a sense of, of what was heard. Um, at some point, I'm going to export out all the comments in their entirety and get them over to soon. If you want to read read the whole tome, you can. <laughs> hmm. So then we started running through the um, individual public spaces, those seven spaces, and asking um, about them. And I've got these in order based on the how many people are actually going to these places. So the Whetstone Pathway ends up being the one that people frequent the most. Um, obviously being a thoroughfare that people are moving th 
through. Um, and the table at the, at, the at the top shows, you know, how frequently people are um, in the or on the whetstone pathway. So, you know, at least once a week, 21 percent. Once a month, 19 percent. So even this, which is the busiest and most popular one for the bunch, is not still in the survey. Some a place there's you know a third of people don't go there at all who responded to the survey. And you know, remember that these are you know vast majority Brattleboro residents, so they're here in, in downtown quite frequently. So, hmm. so then um, after asking that question we asked about, and it was an open-ended question, um, about what people would like to see done to improve that space. Um, and one, in this instance, on the Whetstone Pathway, the concerns around homelessness, um, loitering, and the drinking drugs addiction type of concerns, panhandling, those were clearly very high. and were um, so. The one thing I think that's interesting is you run through that whole list at the top, so feeling unsafe or uncomfortable and comments around policing as well. That was mentioned in at least 60% of the written comments to this question. So, um, so once again, people may have mentioned some positive things and mentioned one of these issues as well. So the question is, what should be done to improve the Whetstone Pathway? And the answer is homelessness. I don't get that. Well, the, the response was talked about homelessness as an issue. So they wanted to see something done to address the homelessness issue that they see on the Whetstone Pathway. Okay. Or, so know, do, something, do something about the homeless people on the Whetstone Pathway, so the way we're supposed to read this 23%. The 23% of the people who answered said something about homelessness. Addressing it. They did, some of them, most of them said, we, we don't want to see evidence of homelessness on the Whetstone Pathway, but, okay. but not everyone. Some people made comments around wanting to provide more services to the homeless people who were on the Whetstone Pathway. Okay. But okay. So it's more nuanced. Than it is. It's okay. more nuanced. It's, you know, when you have 500, uh, <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. And we have 230 actual written comments on this, so I am trying to give you some sense of what topics were mentioned, and I will say that in the, in the category around safe homelessness and also the one around policing, I would say too, um, there is comments sort of on both sides of the issue. So that, you know, like I said, one said more police, one said fewer. Yes. Or uh, police are doing a nice job being respectful of, of, of people, or, you know, we need more policing, or, you know, we don't want people, we don't want people to be arrested for, you know, being in public spaces, that kind of thing. So you do see both sides of that on the policing. I would say both with the homelessness and the policing, more of the comments were of the variety of we want more policing or we want, you know, not to see homeless people in our public space than they were on the other side of, you know, we want to see less police activity or we want, you know, more done for the homeless who are in our public spaces. But there was representation on from both point of view. Yeah. And then in terms of what sort of actual specific things you really could do <laughs> um, to make an improvement, um, you know, cleaning up, trash removal, that type of thing was, was the top um, item here, and then programming. Um, so more events and activities and music um, happening. And many people did tie that idea of programming and activities with the, uh, the comments around there being people loitering or, or inhabiting the space. Um, that, you know, they wanted to see more activity so that there would be less of a predominance of um, people, the homeless um, encamping type of use, which is basically how many people saw the Western Pathway this summer. So the second most uh, frequented location was Pliny Park. Um, 
And I think, you know, you can see the numbers fall off quite a bit here, actually, already, that an even smaller percentage of survey takers actually ever spend any time at Pliny Park. We're, we're basically down under a third um, being there, I would say, on any sort of regular basis. Um, the issue here that got the most um, traction in the comments was having more uh, programming. So that was either music, people want to see events and activities, that type of thing happening um, there, paying people to perform. Um, and you can see the, you know, the same negative issues that came up in relation to the whetstone appear here, but the numbers are, are not as, as high for that. Um, as we get over to the municipal center, um, area. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> wow. A lot of people think they were there for it. Yeah, there's I mean, no, there's, there's, not, there's a yeah. hill, there's a, you know, there are some, there was some attempt at putting out some, a picnic table or two, but. Uh, there are, I mean, there is some no, stuff at the, the top, top, but it's. Yes. Yeah. And the hill. there is yeah. a little garden by the library, but no one can figure out how to get into it, and whether it's even, po whether you're allowed to. So, actually, there was some interesting comments around, we didn't think that that was a place where you were allowed to be. Essentially. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. 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 I would have assumed that they don't want anyone hanging out there. Sometimes yeah. you do see. Scenes. Yeah, I do. I'm not yeah. going to see. People, I, I want to see yeah. people hanging out there, but I would assume. Yeah, it's, it's not actually like a, place to hang a large out. amount of land, which is yeah. kind yeah. of interesting to think about yeah. in terms of. Yeah, it's and shaded, it's right. it's green, um, and, and shaded, um, but it is obviously quite sloped. <laughs> so it's a really serious slope. Um, but yes, people definitely would like to see there be more, more seating. Um, that was the, the big promotion there, and then just a more, um, more landscaped sort of appearance, aesthetically enhancing um, sort of that entrance and the town. Same thing with the depot riverfront park area. Again, a lot of people not even realizing that that's a public space that you can be in at all. Um, so, and then accessibility and, and getting to this location of access came up in the comments here, and that was around the difficulty as a pedestrian of actually getting there. Mm -hmm. um, the need to cross through the intersection, to be on the other side of the road, to cross over, to deal with the railroad tracks um, to get down there, so. Hmm. Wait, is it, are you addressing the third one, access to the river? Access to the river. I think that means for recreational. No, yeah, that means yeah. for recreational. Access is the last one down there at the oh, bottom, oh, six, yeah. The access to the river, people would like to be able to get to the river, and that's something we're going to have to address in the, uh, in the story map some of the environmental concerns there because well apparently BMAC or it might be doing it with their new development to different That's locations I know. some yeah, contamination yeah. issues yeah. yeah right so when people say they in, want in access the to the river they actually mm -hmm. would like to be able to get into the water to put us you know a, a kayak in or yeah. a small boat or you know be out and that's a bit of a challenge in this location mm -hmm. and I think that's something that hasn't <coughs> There isn't any sort of, those people who do know that it's a town piece of property can't figure out why it is, that hasn't already been done. <laughs> uh, because and it, the it reason seems is, like is that, that it's, there's pollution there? Yeah. There was coal tar found in the river back in the 80s, and that doesn't, they don't want it disturbed. And so it's a steep slope, so you would have to uh, put some sort of pier into it. And, so. and that would disturb the So that would disturb yeah. the coal tar on the river bank or something. Yeah, so it would be a major... I'd have to like pull the records and stuff. There is, <laughs> plus it, it's the state of New Hampshire. Yeah, there's that problem too. As soon as you get into the over the, the into the water, you're you're in New Hampshire too. So. The high water mark. Yeah. Wow. Look at that one. <laughs>
So Plaza Park, once again, very hard to get to, um, and not you know a place that that people are frequenting at all. Um, and again, this is an area that people are concerned about how it is being used, um, the loitering um, issue and homeless issues um, came up, and the drug issues there as well. And I didn't put up the individual sheets for the other two, which are the Church Street and the Wells Fountain, because no one goes to those. <laughs> and they had such low numbers that, um, you know, people, they're both very small little locations, and, and people don't really think of them as being a park space. Oh, yeah, right. Unless you're protesting, they're probably not there. Right. Mm -hmm. Although I have to say, the one here is really nice. The little fountain? Yeah, fountain there. Yeah. There's actually a fair amount of space back there behind it. it and it's shaded, it's so like shaded. the trees are a little bit of a buffer to the street noise. It's actually... It's true. I had never been there before until that walk mm -hmm. around that we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's just nice. <coughs> yeah. So we also asked if there were other places that um, people spend time in. Um, the, a lot of people just talked about being on the sidewalks um, and their experience with that um, in the parking lots as well. Some people commented on the parking lots, um, the, the space behind River Garden. Um, a lot of people couldn't figure out why it is we didn't include the commons. <laughs> and I think uh, one of the recommendations I've got for looking at the story map is that we actually do include that as sort of a northern terminus. And while it is outside your designated downtown and downtown zoning districts and stuff, it is sort of the logical endpoint to any kind of pathway system or something like that that would flow through downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, confused a lot of people by not including it <laughs> in the survey. Yeah. Um, so. So those were some of the, the comments, and then the bottom one, 12% of people basically said they don't spend time in public spaces because they're, they're concerned about safety or feeling uncomfortable in them. Yeah. I'm surprised the library only got, what was it, 9%? Very this was an open-ended question, yeah, though, so, so it wasn't like it was prompted. Oh, it wasn't yeah. prompted, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and they I think people were, I mean, uh, people were probably got the idea that we were looking at outdoor type spaces to right. some extent as well. I mean, people did provide some, you know, some people reference a specific business that they go to, or, you know, like, these are the sort of the destination points, mm -hmm. I think you might want to think about those as for people coming downtown for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And then we ended with the broad, you know, question of anything else, basically, that people wanted to talk about. Um, and so, in terms of the the commentary, um, this is the this is the thing that I think that probably did surprise me the most in the survey was the level to which I mean, 27 percent of those response, those 300 and some responses, in some ways, indicated that person felt unsafe or uncomfortable downtown. And that's that's a serious number and a serious issue. Whether there really is that level of public safety concern or not, it hardly matters. If there's that perception um, that that exists. Um, and, and, you know, the comments are, are pretty rough about what it is that people are, you know, believe is happening and um, think is, you know, likely, you know, they're likely to face if they are going to go downtown. You know, people saying that they've changed their habits and don't, you know, go downtown to go to the movies or don't bring their, you know, bring their children with them when they go downtown or you know, that they only park in a few locations that they feel are okay and won't go into any of the other areas to park, you know. So this clearly, you know, a major, um, it's really affecting people's behavior and, and, and you know, I 
activity down there. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, other other topics that came up, um, you know, parking, always still a popular downtown concern, did, did come up as well. Um, the concern about noise and trucks um, downtown. Um, bike, bike lanes, bike parking came up. A lot of the amenity stuff that we were looking at restrooms, Oops. food vendors. There's always a small percentage of people that think that a pedestrian mall would be the best thing ever. Church Street. Uh, yes, uh, we just need Church Street. Midtown Mall just had their event yeah. on Saturday or something. Yeah. And, you know, it's a well, small space, but I think that'd be so in this climate where there's, I don't know if I, if I wrote that. <laughs> I, may <have laughs> the, I may have been one of the contributors. But, to the pedestrian uh, mall? Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, the climate's kind of uncomfortable mm -hmm. more of the year than than not, and so a kind of quasi outdoor indoor space. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel I like it like has the potential. Idea of turning Harmony Lawn into yeah, a right. park. Mm -hmm. I think that's, a nice step. that's that's kind of what my takeaway from all this is. It's kind of sad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the response from people, but it's understandable. Mm -hmm. um, and my realization now, I didn't even realize this before, that how. Mm, we have almost no public space, like in reality, mm -hmm. that's accessible that you can actually get to safely. We've got nothing, you know. And like pu public space is hugely important to the vibrancy of a town, right? Mm -hmm. So, what does it take? And you don't have to answer this, but what does it take to rip up Harmony Parking Lot and turn it into a park? The entire thing. Well, we're what going will to. It take? The, the, yeah. We're going to talk about that through <laughs> the story map. Um, I, the thing to think about, and we'll, we'll and talk and a bit about it when we... we don't need to, I, don't, I don't need an yeah. answer, because I know what yeah. it's going to take, and it's okay. basically impossible. Well, we're we're going <laughs> to look at the... the we're gonna, that, that question is going to come up, and it's going to be addressed in the story map, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. You, you could take one... You could do one of them. You could get rid of one of the parking lots and turn it into a park, I think. And the one on be, Flat Street is it a little But easier. you can't do it to more than one and have enough parking. Yeah. So there's some choices to be made. So I'm that's the thing that we need to talk about. Growing up in Brattleboro, we used to hang out in Harmony Park and mm -hmm. then like the most unfathomable amount of hours spent in Harmony Park and I'm not proud of it. But something <laughs> that bums me out more than anything is that people don't hang out there anymore. You know, yes. and it's a beautiful spot. If we got rid of all the parking, you know, we offered like eatery areas to some of the businesses that are eateries. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if there's all green area with a fountain and then like a stage for performance or uh, for uh, protests or whatever, you know, it would not be as sad and minimal as Pliny Park is, say. So it's like, Harmony is like such an awesome opportunity, especially when we can't realistically access the river. You know, what else can we do? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's, to me, it seems easy. So but, I would say that in response to your your initial thing that there aren't any spaces. You actually do have spaces. There are access issues to the spaces and there's sort of configuration and, and use issues. But it's the the land there is opportunity. You actually as a municipality have a lot of land downtown. It's it's how it's used and, and what it's used for is the question really. Um, so I would push back against that you don't have public space. I think you do. It's just it, yeah. whether it's usable or good public space. Exactly. I think is the question. And when people are thinking about it, like like what I take away from all this, mm -hmm. the work that you put into this, like one of my takeaways is like a lot of people aren't even aware of like what the public spaces are. So like that's an indicator that like mm -hmm. okay, uh, is there a public space downtown? Like the the big thing that they talk about is sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You know, like I hang out on a sidewalk. Like that's sad. <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, we need green space, and, like, the amount of time that I've observed Brattleboro and been in Brattleboro, like, the <coughs> only parking lot is a beautiful space for that. You know, and it's like, it only makes sense to me. So, okay. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm going to push back a little bit, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I hear you. <laughs> so, um, you'll see some ideas. So there are some, yes, there are going to be ideas. Um, and then I did include a range, again, of the comments for you to get us 
sampling in the sense of, of what you know what you you would see if you read the full um, uh, rundown of all of them. So you know, and I think it is a range. There are, and I, I think that a lot of people have a very nuanced and maybe somewhat conflicting conflicted opinions about about downtown, about how things have changed. People brought up the you know. Good times in the '80s in Harmony parking lot mm -hmm. in the survey. I'm um, talking about the '90s. You were in the '90s. People, <laughs> <laughs> you were in the 90s. people <laughs> at least, at least the apparently good times were occurring in the, the '80s. '70s were the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. So that that came up, um, and and then you know, in addition to to the the comments that were are really, you know, descriptive of fear. Um, so. It, it is it is a, a mixed bag on the that comes. Um, you know, even it's funny, like Harmony Parking Lot and hanging out there, um, you know, being a young person. Uh, older people would say, "I don't want to go down there because you know, there's so many teenagers hanging out. I feel uncomfortable." So it's just you know, there's always two sides to the coin. The, I never well, felt that way. Exactly. But the, but, but nevertheless. Yeah, the biggest indicator to a healthy community is young people hanging out, you know, yeah. especially like children face to being face. outside yeah. and playing in the street, like riding bicycles and throwing balls and stuff, or teenagers standing in circles kicking hacky sacks. That's like what shows a healthy, vibrant community. Vibrant too, yeah. And where is that happening? You know, like, does that, I don't see that anymore. And it's like, that, that's a bummer, you know, like we should do something. We should offer a space to people where they can go to do those things. But you know, also there's there's been such a change with stranger danger and parents yeah. unwilling to give their children freedom to be with uh, peers and so on, and yeah. you know, which is a big reason that teenagers. I just learned this recently. Big reason teenagers are on their devices so much is their parents aren't you know aren't comfortable, yeah, or as a society we're not comfortable with enough face to face for for teens, which is so important, you know. But if we offer it to them, you know, if we give them a place that's safe, you know, the, yeah. then. It's still it's like, parents in a lot of right. Yeah. Parents would still have to be convinced that as a planning commission, though, like what is realistic? You know, I feel like a park in Harmony, like so. It's 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 funny because it says Harmony parking lot. It'd be such a simple thing to say, just Harmony Park. Mm -hmm. You know, and get rid of the lot. <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of the survey results. Um, there's also the photo preference survey. Um, and we had that up, and you'll see those in the story map and all of those. So we showed, uh, we, I continued that on after the charrette, so we had that up at the charrette. Um, I didn't include the results from the charrette in um, the ones that are in the, surf, the, the story map because they were highly influenced by one eight-year-old girl who <laughs> <laughs> went around and put sticky dots on a lot of things. <laughs> in a rather uncontrolled manner. Um, <laughs> But um, <laughs> in any event, we've continued it on to the online um, survey using a, set of, a good portion of the same images that we used um, during the, that we had up during the charrette. And so we were able to get some feedback as to what um, people's preferences might be um, in bike and pedestrian amenities and um, art and things like that downtown lighting. Actually, I guess I, did, I don't think I did the lighting one online. The lighting pictures were really hard to deal with because in order to show lighting, it has to be dark, and <laughs> this actually doesn't photograph very well, so that was a bit of a challenge. But so let's move into the story um, map here. I'm going to need to get this up and get this online. So this is what the um, story map product would look like. It's it's basically uh, an online um, format. It's interactive. Um, it's meant to be responsive, so you can look at this on your phone, and you'll get a slightly different version of it. But it works very well on a phone. Um, it works, you know. So it, it, it's it's that kind of web um, content system thing that responds to the way the device and the size of the screen that you've got. We can put in maps and video and links to other um, web content, audio. Um, all that kind of stuff. So there can be a lot of, of interactive features, and in many ways, it's sort of like a a, a web-based presentation format. So is it online right now? Like
it is actually online right now and live. It doesn't have a nice little address that's easy to get to or not. Uh, it's whatever is up there. Yeah, it's okay. that thing up there. <laughs> um, so um, I, I published it so that I can actually show it here, and I will probably unpublish it later because I'm still working on it. And I don't necessarily need to have Google indexing it yet. <laughs> but um, I can turn it on so we can uh, we can look at it here tonight. Um, so as a forward to this, um, while this provides a lot of interesting um, content and ways to use content, it also is not got a lot of uh, options. It doesn't give you a lot of options for what it looks like in the end. Mm -hmm. So there's literally four templates, and you don't get any choice on the fonts, and you don't get any choice on the <laughs> stuff. So um, being a designer like I am, this is a, this is a real, uh, I'm really stressed about this in some ways, but in other ways, it's you have to you have to make this work with the limited palette and, and styles and, and what you can do. And there's, I mean, there's a ton you can do, but just as a warning, there are some things that just you can't do. <laughs> so this would open with a little um, introduction. This is sort of the introduction that we've been using for the project as a whole um, here uh, about what the purpose of the downtown design plan is. Um, and then this is the table of contents. So we're going to talk, we're going to walk through it. Um, some, I've started to do some of the background bits and a little bit of the um, strategy bit so you can get some sense of what the content might look like, but most, a lot of this isn't filled in yet. So um, there's a slide or two that give a background on what good public space is. There's a little bit of a uh, setting the context for downtown Brattleboro in terms of its physical setting, the, his the history of, of the downtown and how it came to be in its current condition and what that is. So, and then we walk through the public spaces, the parks and parking lots and streets and um, sort of do an existing conditions kind of summary of those. A lot of that is done. And then we'll have some slides on the planning process that was undertaken, so the Better Block Challenge, the um, Charette. Well, that'll be mostly the videos and images that we have from those events. So that, um, for those of you, I don't know, have they seen the, have they had the links, seen the links to the videos yet? The excellent videos done by Battle Royal Community Town. I'm not sure if I did the Better Block one. I think yeah. I had sent that out. But okay. I haven't seen it. No? Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a, a, a nice short uh, video that really well documents the, it's that so activity, but it's very it's really good. Um, so that kind of content will be in there. And then we'll step through the public space strategies, and this will be very similar to the format of the presentation I did at the wrap-up for the charrette, where we'll talk through the path idea and sort of what's along the way of the path, and then come back down Main Street and talk about improvements along the Main Street corridor and the pieces that are along Main Street. So it's sort of, um, we'll catch that, and then there's a few additional things at the end around programming, and rail trail, and things like that that will come in at the end. Um, a next steps piece is some sort of a sort of project idea list type of, of piece and then um, the various credits that we're going to need to put in to, for the content that we've got in here. So that's sort of the outline of what you can expect to see. So this is the public space. Um, if you saw the handouts from the charrette, this is essentially that language. Managed to find, uh, I think, uh, I think this is probably a photo that Stephanie took uh, from the Elliott Street block party this summer. Talking, you know, a bit more about what what is good public space. This is actually we'll show just uh, we'll, we, we won't watch the whole thing because it goes for like seven minutes. But this is a just a video that a montage of photos of public spaces that the Project for Public Spaces has done from so it's photos from around the world of, of interesting public spaces. Carried on like this. Uh, in the middle somewhere, I think, is the most important run. There's a good six photos or so that focus on ice cream as being incredibly important. <laughs> There's just photo after photo of people eating ice cream in public spaces, so that's that's good. Um, you know, there's photos in here of, of, of the importance of water 
in public space, of seating, of, of art, um, the types of things that people do in public spaces, how they interact. So it's just, it's just an interesting visual uh, piece here. Uh, that. So that's the sort of thing you can do, is that we can drop in video pieces like that, and that's something that the Project on Public Spaces has put up on, on YouTube. And then this is a, the little one down here is actually a kind of similar piece, but it actually um, is a more of a document around William H. White, who's known as Holly White, um, who is really the planner and researcher and um, mind behind the whole science of what makes good public space. Um, so I know you guys have looked at Bryant Park. That he was a major contributor to the design work and the philosophy behind Bryant Park. Um, and he also wrote a, a book, Urban Life, The Social Life of Small Urban Spaces, um, which this has some clips, you know, takes. So you can pop this up. This is the sort of thing you can do with this. You can pop this up. And it's, it, again, it's, it's images and sort of what it is we're looking for um, in good public space. And there he is. <laughs> So the movable chair, um, which is the Bryant Park idea, right? Um, that kind of thing. So these are for people who want to, you know, explore the ideas a little bit more. They can go in and get a little more depth through these pieces. That are in. And then we come into the setting the stage for Brattle, downtown Brattleboro, um, doing some physical setting on the location. And once again, these map pieces, you know, people can, I haven't added much to this one. Right now it just has a pin that says Brattleboro's here, but um, I may actually add some additional content to that. But you can see that you can zoom maps up to the screen, pop them back, drop them in and around the text. So that one's really dark. Is That, that one's dark. Is that just your... No, it is, it is a dark one? background on that map. I actually might change that map out. That's it's a little template that they've got if you want to basically do a pin on a map type of map and it's it's got the dark it's got the dark canvas background that Esri uses. So that's what it is. Yeah. It's it's a little better here on my screen than it is um, projecting it projecting it with the light on it. And as you zoom in it does get more of the streets. You're not seeing the streets up there, they're not making it through the projector. And of course we're in like East Wallen for Vermont at this point and there aren't very many streets. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, that one is a dark um, color space. But the idea would be to give some sense of location. I actually think this is probably not the right map. I'll probably do a different one because um, it doesn't yeah. really have roads as highlighted as much as I want them to be. So I'm still working on it. Still working on it, but concept is there. Um, so. The uh, Public Works drone has taken a lot of really nice uh, photos of downtown uh, Brattleboro, and so I've, I've now got a, a wealth of excellent imagery to work from, which is great. And we're sort of getting a sense of downtown sitting into the landscape here that I think is pretty interesting. So, I think, you know, there'll be more to be added in here, a little bit more um, terrain, water resources. We talk a bit about the history what brought people to locate here in the first place, water power. This is the first of the bigger maps that I've got dropped in here. And so this is the historic, this is the 1885 Sanborn map, and you can actually zoom in. Wow. And That's see. That's very helpful. Look at Harmony pieces. Park. So this yeah. is, this wow. is, this is, this is it. There was, <laughs> there was some buildings here, but there was a bit of a park as well um, at, in 1885. This is actually, uh, of the, I mean, downtown Brattleboro by 1885 is largely what it's what's there now. I mean, it's the, the you know it's it's 80 percent the same you know type of thing. But this spot where Harmony is uh, is actually one of the spots that has probably changed the most over time. Um, it's it's, it's been it's there's been parking lot there. There's been green space there. There's been buildings of different sorts there um, over time. So it's kind of an interesting interesting study, but. You know, you can zoom in, you can pull around and um, do that sort of thing. So. Mm. so that's that map. 
and um, you can drop in some historic photos. Right now, just do not click and open. I'm hoping that that's one of the things that they're going to make happen pretty soon. You can actually force it if you want to to get in here, but it's still pretty small. So now it's probably going to fall. Oh yeah, it's going to jump me all the way back to the beginning, so I won't do that again. <laughs> okay. So, talk a little bit about the transportation network um, and how that developed. Is that one of the drone pictures? That is one of the drone pictures. These cool photos picture. are amazing. I mm -hmm. try and find that. good photos of Brattleboro and I have, you yeah. know, they're so limited. Well, I was, re I, I was really excited Caesar. to get these from, awesome. the, from the drone. So I, I told them that the, every, everything was perfect except there wasn't traffic, any traffic congestion resulting from this train. Oh yeah, we're all <laughs> There's one car waiting. Yeah, yeah. like, what what day was this? this Actually, not, right behind them, there's a whole line. <laughs> this is not an accurate Yeah, but there's nothing the other way. Coming no, there's nothing. They haven't backed up yet. But, um, it's a great but, Yeah, it is a great um, map of, of early the, spring. Yeah. And actually, this map over here is very interesting, too. So this is actually a map from 1848. And this line right here, north, for some reason, is facing to the right. But this is the railroad. Right, and this is the bridge, right here. The railroad. This is the year the railroad got this far. It hadn't oh, gone any further yeah. yet. Um, so there's no. You can see it doesn't continue to the north. Which is just kind of interesting to think that the railroad. It was right there, and that was as far as it went. Huh? Yeah. Wait. So where did it? So interesting. So it just they were in the process of building. It came to Brattleboro and stopped. Yeah, it did the next chunk. You know, oh, they were building. Isn't that the? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the north? No, this is to the south. Yeah, that's oh, okay, that's okay. like depot street. Oh, there yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. I just so yeah, it's 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 a it. You have to kind of tilt your brain, and it. I think yeah. it's it's a hand drawn map from 1848. It's not exactly cartographically okay. perfect, but no, you can see that the basic street grid is exactly the same. And <sighs> was pretty much there um, without too much change to it to this day. So, um, so we'll do a little bit of that. Uh, talk a little bit about infrastructure and um, <laughs> I haven't got any text in there. But the good photo <laughs> on, of digging up the street, <laughs> digging up the infrastructure. Um, I believe some of it was from the 1800s in this hall. <laughs> yeah. Josh, they found some 1880s pipe. Yeah. That was what I, I did. 1880s that. what? Yeah. It was 1880s pipe that broke. Oh. <laughs> it lasted a long time. That. Yeah. That's that's pretty good that pipe. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's one sort of style of how the story map goes. So you sort of see it kind of going down through it vertically, flowing down through. And then you can have little pull out um, sort of presentations. So these go, go horizontally when we might talk. So this would be some of the um, survey results can get put in here, um, and I'm just going to do some little summary about what's going on from a business perspective, housing perspective, uh, some of the major institutions downtown, and then the planning and zoning, this would be a place to put your zoning map, the downtown, the designated downtown, lines, that kind of thing can go in here. And once again, this is, you know, it's a live map that you can, we can add more layers to and zoom around, I just don't have them in here yet. So that's sort of the slide show component. And then we're down to the part where we're walking through the inventory of the public spaces. Um, so these have, a couple of these have maps that go along with them here on the side. Um, so you can actually click on a um, point on the map. So Clooney Park, and there's some description of it. There's a photo. Um, mm -hmm going on so people can can get in there and um, learn more about the spaces. Brandy, mm -hmm. have you seen any story map presentations with like a how-to? You know, how intuitive is it? I actually I know, think, <laughs> I think that the might up at the table of contents that, that that might actually be necessary. Yeah. Um, they do, you might notice that there is like up at the top, there was that little arrow. I don't mm -hmm. think it is um, quite enough to sort of explain to people um, to look for the arrows that sort of tell you which way you can navigate mm -hmm. through it. Yeah. But, yeah. 
I like here I did say you can click on the circles. <laughs> no, that's good though. Yeah. I think that's yeah. important because yeah. so that I you know there's a lot of stuff in here that you could use. Yeah. I like the the historical elements a lot, like the old photos and stuff. Yeah, like well, there's going to be more. Yeah, we'll have more of that as we go along. It's some really good ones. Um, so then, um, just this is a place where I put some of the the infographics from the survey report here, um, and some of the comments that we've gotten. Um, so this is some of the areas where I don't really have any design control, and it sort of irritates me. So. This is the, the, there's the paragraph text and there's the quote text and that's just the way it is. And the quote text. The quote is text bigger. is bigger and then the, yeah, that's really irritating me. But it's the way it is. Hmm. So. It's like a um, whole quote. Hmm. Yeah, a whole quote says. Yeah. 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 It's just like uh, but it's what it does. Um, so we saw these and obviously this is just a written of what we just looked at. So this is actually one of the photo preference um, results pages. So these were the parks and play spaces um, one that we asked people which they'd like to see. So um, people expressed interest in the pocket parks, the greenways, um, performance areas. You know, the hard surface plaza one, I think, and the playground, which people on taking the survey, I think, were didn't have a lot of you know, perhaps people with young children who were looking for playgrounds um, necessarily taking the survey. And here on the side, this is a place to put in some of what's going on um, other in other components of what's going on in downtown Brattleboro. So this is some of the looking at the alley along the transportation center and the block party that happened there earlier this year. So that might expand actually a bit as we go along. Do you think people had the, um, an idea of the differentiation between a pocket park and a parklet? Um, the, or might they be? I don't know that people did. I think they responded to what they saw in the image. Okay. Uh, and the pocket park showed it was bigger and, and it had more right. green in it. And the um, so parklet right, was, was responding to the image. Okay. I think it was more the image than the words necessarily. Okay. Yeah. So similarly, walk through the parking lots. Um, so if we click on, we'll click on our favorite, Harmony. Um, so the I used the information and incorporated the information from your parking study into here. So if people click on a parking lot, they can actually learn some information about that parking lot, like how many spaces there are, um, how much use that we're getting, and those were the, the counts that were taken in 2017. So we can see what the occupancy of these parking lots is. And then these are some charts and graphs based off the data in the parking plan um, as well. And there's a link. If you were to click on the link, you would go and you to the document that's on your website of the parking plan. Is the plan. Preston lot on that previous map? It is. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, there it is. I yep. see it. There it is, right there. Okay. I'm just kind of curious. Sort of the difference, and really the message that comes out of this is looking at both the survey results and the stuff from the parking study, which had a survey and their analysis. It's fairly, it's, 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 it's it's similar. There, people's sense that there isn't parking is that what parking there is, there are access issues. With. So um, it's really more about the pedestrian experience once you've parked the car than it is mm. um, about the, the parking itself. Um, so what do you mean? Interesting. What do you mean by that? like like parking your car and having to walk to the store? Walking is not the problem. People, the, the, I mean, the distance isn't the problem. It's the walk, it's the experience of the walk. Is it, um, is the sidewalk, you know, are there condition issues that make the sidewalk difficult to walk on? You know, some places it's the steepness issues that are problematic for people, narrowness of the sidewalk, the traffic, 
you know, needing to cross streets and some people not liking to do that, um, busy traffic. Um, so you don't mean just parking your car and getting out of the parking lot safely? No, it's the experience you have as a pedestrian after you've parked the car that's influencing people's thoughts about parking downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it could be lighting. Lighting, it sense of safety space, yes, on the street. Um, so, um, so in the um, parking survey that was done, um, so when asked like why people parked where they did, why they chose to park, their reasons, distance wasn't the reason. It was whether the type of park parking facility and their sense of safety, um, which were the driving facility, the driving decisions. And that's what, in looking at the written comments, you get a lot of sense of, um, you know, several people mentioned the, 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 in the parking lots, they prefer to park on the street because of the meters are easier to deal with than the kiosks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so for a lot of people, I mean, if, if, you, if you think that, you know, you have either a mobility challenge or um, you have um, a couple yeah, of kids in tow, having to get out of your vehicle in one of these parking lots, go to the meter kiosk, get your th ticket, take it back to the car, and then go to your destination, this could be viewed as a hassle or, you know, something, or, or worse, as something that is not really doable for you. Um, park you, Smarter app is great. Yeah, <laughs> yes. it really I mean, there is. is a difference between when the parking yeah. study was done and now we do. Well, those, those came up in the comments now, too, so I don't know how widespread the app is becoming, but I don't know if that many people I, I know, know about it. Yeah. First time I heard about it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. You can add time. Um, you can do it remotely. for here. Yeah. yeah. Any. It yeah. just it figures out where you are, and you kind of confirm that's a, that's where I am, and it works for the. It's not like that. You need to hard to more advertising. Yep. Hard yeah. yeah. And you don't have to print a little ticket. No. You just put no. in your driver, your license plate, and then number? meter people know that that's your yeah, car. I from so I don't know. Oh, <laughs> wow! I use it a lot. Yeah. Prince can tell. I don't know the app right now. Oh, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't use it because I'm usually walking from here, yeah. or and then every time I am parking downtown, I'm like, oh, I should have had the app, and I just, I'm just I'm not going to download it while I'm not on five. <laughs> <laughs> so I just need to do it. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so it goes through the parking and basically making the argument around and, and setting, providing the data around how much parking is actually available and how much is used, which is an important basis for then the discussion of strategy for the outcome. Looking at the streets and sidewalks um, piece, I have a debate about whether to use this photo or not. It's a great photo of Main Street, but it's a funeral procession. <laughs> Do people know if it's a funeral procession? I'm so trying to get an opinion. Some people might. I would not. Wait, where, where is the vehicle? Well, the thing is that the, there's a public works yeah, it's, vehicle it's, it's, in it. It's so the funeral procession for might. the public works yeah. guy so, from public works. Yeah. yeah. Is that but a it's a problem? really great shot of Main Street. It's not. <laughs> I mean, it's a. You know, it's real. Does it feel does it feel disrespectful? That'd be the only thing. But I don't know. I don't know. think it feels. Nothing wrong with it being a funeral. Yeah. I mean, I can see some people might be noticing. Yeah, right. Yeah, I wouldn't think it. What I notice is that massive truck right there that yeah. shouldn't be there. That's what I notice. Well, we're coming up to a discussion of that. <laughs> right. Um, That's not typical. Yeah. So one of the things that, um, so just as a point of reference, there's 23 acres of land in the road right, in the street rights of way in downtown. So. And overall, on the side of the downtown, this is a lot of, of the actual square footage that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it's sort of interesting to run down the list of what it is you're doing with that space. There's a lot of competing demands on the space. Um, so, in the survey, you see it the idea that basically the sidewalks are cramped or crowded or congested. Um, and just that feeling of, of inadequate space. Um, and I'm actually going to change out this cross section um, a little bit. I've now gotten more precise measurements thanks to uh, better imagery. Yeah, they're um, much closer together. Which, mm -hmm. right? Um, actually, there, it, it, I'm going to have a drawing that comes up 
but there are, it does range. The curve to curve width ranges, it actually goes down further than 50, the, more of it's 42. Mm. Um, but it does actually reach a point where it's 70 feet wide from curve to curve. Mm. Um, but it's not consistent at all uh, through, through the length of Main Street. Um, and the sidewalk widths do vary from 5 to 10 um, feet as well along the way. From what, sir? 5 to 10. So this section goes through basically is you know it's data, it's it's background information about traffic flow and how much where the where vehicles are turning, how many tra what amount of traffic there is. Traffic counts in downtown Brattleboro haven't been done that frequently um, and consistently, so it's 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 a bit hard if you look at this. Um, infographic. There's one, um, the High Main Street intersection was done in 2018. You've got a 2013, a 2009, and a 2008, and those are the most frequent counts at those intersections. Um, the, only, the continuous counter that probably gives you the best data is, which this is a chart from, is the one that's on the West River Bridge, the north, you know, north one. So, but overall, traffic is actually down over really? time. Yeah. Then the line, the line goes down. So there is less, there are less vehicles going, traveling downtown on on Main Street than there were 20 years ago. Hmm. No. 2000 or so. Yeah, well, it's yeah so I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it's less. So that chart's going from 14,000 to 18,000. Yeah. Oh, so and that's on. I-91? No, this is on oh, downtown, downtown Main, Main Street. Street. West River Bridge. It's at the West River Bridge, just at the north. Oh. And so, this is a, oh, this oh, one's that, counted continuously. I mean, yep. there would be, yeah. obviously, you've got, the numbers will be slightly different in the heart of downtown because you've mm -hmm. got, you know, more local traffic. But the overall trend, I think, in traffic would be fairly reflective of this. And um, an interesting point is that while you do see that little peak um, right here in this chart, that's when they were building the bridge on, 80, on 91. Oh, so, so if you actually think about yeah. it, it's that, um, really. So what year did you begin with? Wow. It goes from 1998 to 2018. And it's down at It's down about 2000. 2000, a little more. 2,000, 2,500 2000, vehicles. That's kind of striking. Yeah. Yeah. Any anything to account for that? Yeah, the economy? I, I <laughs> would contribute it to being like reputation. Like it was, no, don't go downtown. No, I no, think, it, 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 stay, it, stay, I think that if you went on almost any segment of Route 5 in Vermont, this would, the overall trend would be the same. The, the economy of Vermont has been slowly declining for a long time. Mm. <laughs> you know. So this is just reflective of economic trends. Mm. That's crazy because it feels like there's more traffic. It may feel like there's it's more traffic. It moves so slowly. But there's yeah. <laughs> so there actually, yeah, maybe have, it's because it moves so slowly because they put in that traffic light at Dismotion Junction. God damn maybe yeah. everyone's vehicles are bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, bigger. Cars yeah. yeah I guess we could add a, a rather chart, another line to the graph about the size of vehicles. So <laughs> we also get down to talking about the traffic. traffic. Um, so. 6% of the vehicles um, coming through downtown are uh, larger trucks. Um, and the count that was done in 2018 at Maine and High gives a pretty good um, assessment of um, when that truck traffic, how much truck traffic there is and when it occurs. So there was about 750 trucks through that intersection on the days that they counted. So they counted on two days between 6 and 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Um, in the in June of 2018, it it's been a long. Time. Oh, um, so so it's about 750 trucks came through during that 12-hour period. But there's a peak, and there's a, a lot more. There's more truck traffic in the morning. There's more trucks going north, and the peak was about 8:30 to 9:30 in the morning, and there was 101 trucks going through that intersection that in that one hour. So it's not an even flow through the day. Um, These aren't necessarily just 18-wheelers, though. 
No, it, it they could be smaller. They could be box, box trucks, trucks or things like that. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Still a lot of commercial, trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Commercial, larger, wider axles. There's a lot of trucks. <clears throat> so, obviously, we heard a lot of concern about the truck traffic. And so, I actually put some language in here as sort of background so people understand what is happening and why trucks are coming through. It's the weight limits question. Um, and you know the feasibility of creating a truck route, you know, is not it's not really a viable option. You'd have to take out a neighborhood somewhere, a road to make yeah. it happen. You know, there's just nowhere to bring another route through that you're not impacting someone. So I think if there was an obvious truck route, probably would have been built. You know, that option would have been explored because clearly the truck issue has been there for a long time. Mm. And then trying to point the, towards improving flow, mm -hmm. essentially, downtown as mm -hmm. the one thing your municipality can do to help address the problem. Because clearly, the breaking and starting of the trucks as they come up the hill, particularly for the things that can go down as well and hit the traffic lights, um, there's, is, is a lot to do with the noise generation. Because when the vehicles are moving, at a consistent speed, they actually make a lot less noise than when they're starting and stopping. So, here we have a photo from 1941 showing this car congestion issue, not a new one. <laughs> um, so, you know, talking a bit about the intersections, a nice classic 70s photo of Malfunction Junction. Oh, no. Oh. Huh? Not very many cars. You're not very cars right now. There's also no lights, no lines, no crosswalks. <laughs> <laughs> when did the lights go in there at Malfunction Junction? Relatively recently. Yeah, it was yeah. When they redid it. Yeah. Was it when they redid the... Yeah. feel like they've been there since I got to town, which was early 2000s. So yeah. Maybe some point in the 90s. No, well, no, there was a here and I got yeah. down in '97. There used to be a, there used to be a flashing Late yellow and flashing early. red, and then they Could put be all early 2000. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's when they redid the co-op project or the 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 re the repainting well, the repainting yeah. project. No, was it was before the co-op project. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think they did that in anticipation for the co-op. If I remember yeah. correctly, it wasn't that long. It was like five years ago. No. Like really recently, there used to be a flashing. It was not five years ago. Six years? <laughs> they were here, I think, in a bio three. When was the co-op built? The new one? Yeah. 2012? 20, yeah. yeah, 2012. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah. 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 So, the, yeah, I mean, the plans, that, the V-Trans plans that I finally have gotten a hold of, they drew those in the early 2000s, and they have a, a signalized stuff on them. So that, that actually might be when they put the signals in. Yeah, it might be early. So I think those the, the actual drawing dates of those are like 2002 or 2003. Yeah. So then we start talking about um, bike um, pedestrian facilities. And I'm really hoping I am going to be able to get these photos to zoom up because this is a great photo from 1907 of the street. So this is actually right at the bridge, the Redstone Bridge, looking north. And um, the trolley tracks are in place. There's horse and cart, there's pedestrians, there's a couple people on a bicycle, and there's a dog running amok. Um, <laughs> all in the photo, so it's a really, it's a fun um, photo. Complete street. It's a very complete street. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is one of the survey, the, the photo survey people um, asked what bike, you know, facilities and amenities they'd like to see. Basically, people would like to bike where there aren't cars. Um, so mm. the, the the, the options that show the bikes separated from the vehicle traffic were the highest um, rated there. So we're talking a bit about bicycling, uh, pulling in some of the stuff that was done um, in 2010 from the Marble College project, which had very similar results in terms of what people wanted to see um, down by the river. And then cars have been there for a long time. So this is a 1920s postcard. So the trolley tracks are still in place. So it's from 
Creek, they, they pulled them up in 28, I learned, uh, or 23, 1923, so somewhere in that range. So this is an early 20s postcard uh, showing the street. Yeah, I think probably configured pretty much with, I bet you with wise it's pretty much the same curb to curb as, as, as it is today. Um, those, those cars were actually pretty small. If you're like parking a bunch of minis yeah. along the street like that. <laughs> um, so the other thing we can do, this, um, the Barbara Historical Society has a bunch of historic podcasts. So this one tells the story of the trolley. Uh, this podcast is local. So you can actually play that. Yeah, we're not going to listen to the whole thing. <laughs> but needless to say, there was a lot of controversy about the trolley. The trolley finally got built and we've been there for 28 years. So. What was the controversy? Again, the, well, to it was, it was, uh, you listened to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It was a, the, 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 um, they, the, they used the threat of it being dangerous as the reason to oppose it. But I don't know what caused someone to want to oppose it in the first place. So. Um, I think it was one of those things where they felt the state was telling them that they were, had to do something. And, uh, there was a, a usurped local local control that really got people agitated. Huh. Um, so, and then we've got what pedestrian facilities and amenities people would like to see. Um, and again, the green space, the sidewalk cafes. People really, a lot of these were quite popular. Art and music, more seating, lighting, food carts. Some comments from people who took the survey, some more photos showing the sidewalk, that kind of thing. So that gets us through basically the inventory of what's what's here and what the issues are, and some facts and, and um, information to help inform the recommendations that follow. Like I said, this is going to do the, the background on the, I'll send you the planning video. process. You can watch the video. Just this. You're not going to run very well. It starts with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you don't want to see soon? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just play, play the first minute. <laughs> I just did a great job. No. There, there you are. Really, you, <laughs> you, you're filmed like monthly or more. I see. People can be watching you on YouTube constantly. For <laughs> almost 20 years now. I know. They can go back through the archives and see. <laughs> you, uh, we had a show on Merrimack, a weekly show. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, there's more stuff that's going to get dropped in here, but that'll basically just be a summary of that. So then we finally actually come to the strategies, the public space strategies. Um, so the first one will be to walk through the, um, the bridge, or the bridge, the, the path, uh, starting with the Bridge Street area, and then moving north, um, and ending, I'd like to end at the common there so that we sort of do that whole stretch. I don't have any of this content in here, but you saw some of that from the um, presentation, at the wrap-up presentation for the charrette. So that material will get put in here. Um, this will flow, then I said we'll come back down Main Street. And so this goes to being one of the side moving presentations here. Um, and I want, I've got a couple pieces of this done, so I want to actually sort of show you what the pieces could look like, and this is where we can start to have a bit of a conversation around what areas you would like to see focused on, um, and what sort of level of detail might be of interest, and that kind of thing, so we can help prioritize the role of the final work here. So this is the one for the library, looking at their front area and side garden. We knew we had to do this one because Paul, the landscape architect I was working with, promised Star. And I don't think Paul's wife is a librarian as well. So I think when a librarian comes around and tells him to do something, he's on it. Well, <laughs> he's it also trained. was part of the Better Block. It was also better than the challenge, but he, he really he like she pulled him aside and she she really got him to promise to work on this. So okay, that is Star. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 No, I laughed at him. I said, I told him that 
he was really accustomed to taking orders from a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, images, and they started coming up with what the recommendations were that came out of that, which was level the front, provide outdoor seating, improve the access to the side garden, and provide a sign, a, a different sign that really um, is more visible um, from the street. So, this is uh, a sketch of what that could look like. Um, and so, this is sort of the format that we're thinking of for more of these sites. So, there'll be some photos some text and in some cases some drawings like this sort of envisioning what um, what could be done with the space. It would be great to have seating out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. A place to have lunch and people mm -hmm. watch. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, this this section of the street is actually at a very weird angle in like three dimensions weird yeah. angle. <laughs> it, it it's going in you know, different directions laterally and such, but there still is, those planters around the trees are actually very large. If you actually go out there and measure like what the size of those planters are, if you were to rearrange that and get the grade more leveled out, um, the planter, you could get sort of rid of the planter box component and then there would be a lot more uh, floor space, shall we say, to work with um, around them, so. I like how that wall of naturally created seating Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you could do that kind yeah. of a, a, an edge treatment, and it would tie mm -hmm. in a lot more, I think, to the architecture of the building as well. And then, you know, the shrub that's here is just got to go. Yeah. That it's so just the it's, idea it's overgrown. It's, <laughs> it's overstated. It's welcome. There's a lot of like tension. There's a lot of friction trying to get yeah to the library. Yeah. It's unnecessary. Yeah. The planners are part of that. Yeah, it's 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 a shrub that's outside its welcome. And that shrub. Yeah. Those trees can't go anywhere. Right? The trees. For that shrub. No. <laughs> yeah, I do. I. Yeah, I'm just. It's 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 too big. The trees. No, I mean the trees are 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 there. Um, they're remarkably healthy given where they are. Um, I'm sure that they're actually too close to the building. Yeah. Technically accurate about the whole thing, but no one's going to take those down. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. so um, other things we might look at here would be the Harris parking lot area but in the area around the rec center. I think these are just going to be short little pieces. Yes. I, I know I haven't. I think I've told you that before. I know I just haven't done anything with it yet. I still have the word programming spelled wrong in here too. I don't <laughs> Pliny, um, Pliny Park uh, piece is, is somewhat um, done here. So this would be, I think we could do something probably a little bit more detailed than this for Harmony, I think was uh, my sense of what the priority is. And you've got some plans for Preston already that we could show mm -hmm. um, and then talk about how to balance out the parking versus green space in these parks. So, um, you know, so I'm sort of seeing these set up as a little background on the space, a kind of an assessment about how it functions. Um, so this is, you know, a place to drop in the information that we got from the survey, um, in terms of how the place is used, what people wanted to see done, Um, the recommendations um, would be to open this up. This has actually got a fairly big footprint in reality, but it, most of the space isn't usable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, because of the design, mm -hmm. you actually are not getting much advantage out of the actual amount of, of area there was. I mean, there, there was a dime and there was a gas station there, right? You know, it's not a small um, site, so. And the seating doesn't encourage interaction because it's all, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's just... Yep. Yep. I think the bus shelter is just so oversized mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And, and it blocks the side. Blocks it yep. yeah. so, so one thing that I think some of these, this, I've got up here sort of, like, I don't know that I like this format, but uh, basically an inspiration uh, wall where you think about some of the things, the ideas that could be incorporated into 
the space. It's ideal for movable chairs. Yeah, movable chairs. Um, something that would bring more light um, in um, to the space, providing you know some sort of cover, canopy, the art, that type of thing. You know, I'll tell you the, the youth I worked with at high school, they loved the Art Deco idea. Yeah, Every single one say, of them. The they really like, wanted to see I really that liked the pavement that glows. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything that was like had color or light, they yeah. really enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, if you were to take those ideas and sort of open that up, the space up, and you could actually move the existing design in this direction, I think, by with a little bit of work and eliminating the walls and fences mm -hmm. and the, the bus shelter, which is, mm -hmm. is no, I mean, even if it was, you could almost even turn the existing structure and be 90 against, degrees right, yeah. and put it against yeah. the wall, it would, right. it would still be more open. You could provide the shelter or you could do it in a different way with a different type of shelter. Yeah, with a different, you know, this is, you know, the more sort of urban plexiglass yeah. mm -hmm. awning type thing. But, right. you know, it's obviously the natural thing that people would want to cut through this space. And because there's just the two designated entrances in or out, it isn't really a space that you can cut through and move through. And so that, mm -hmm. I think when we go back to the do you spend any time here question, you have, you know, you're not going to just wander through Plenty Park necessarily. Mm -hmm. you, you go in there. If you, you go in there. You're going yes. in there, yes. right? Yeah. There's a destination you, for a reason. Yeah. And then you're static in there. Yeah, it's like nothing to do except no. sit <laughs> around the edge, around the edge, <laughs> waiting for something to happen in front of you that never happens. Right? <laughs> <laughs> something in the middle is supposed to happen. Yeah, there's so, interest in having um, half of that covered bus station be covered bike parking. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's some need for bike, bike parking. parking. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, I think that having a covered space is a great idea. The question is whether it needs to be oriented along the sidewalk like that and creating a barrier. Right. Um, I mean, because the sidewalk feels very cramped here too, right? And you feel very close to the traffic. And it, it is just, um, it's not open. It, it doesn't feel expansive. And I think that's actually a theme with a lot of the public spaces that you do have in downtown Broadway. You mm -hmm. actually go around and look at them more carefully and see how many of them have fences, how many of them have walls or hedges. Um, there's a lot of effort to defining edge um, and, and creating a barrier. And I think that was a reaction to there's a lot of traffic on the street. And so what we need to do is create a barrier. But in some ways, that further intensifies, first of all, the feeling of how much traffic there is when you're on the sidewalk. Because if you're, you can't get away. You can't get away from it. There's no. You don't have any sense that there's space um, adjacent anymore. This sort of that visual sense. Um, and then, yeah, you don't have you don't have those opportunities to take an alternate path. I guess. And you're kind of stuck with that. So, yeah. So that's the sort of thing that um, I envision we might do. Um, the Harmony lot. Um, idea, which uh, during the charrette we looked at turning at least one of the bays, the double bays, into a park space, um, and then during the walking tour, the idea of yes, what you came up with, which was I didn't come up with it. Yeah, I mean, there should be no. This makes sense. There should be no cars <laughs> here at all. Yeah. Um, questions came up, but I, there's um, that there is part some complications. Is private, yeah, so it's not all public. So there's right going to always have to be access and a certain amount, and there's a drive-through bank. Yeah, no, I recognize there. that. Yeah. So there's some. Can't we take it from them? What is that called when the government eminent comes domain. in? Yeah, eminent domain. <laughs> the Brooks I House. I don't think we're going <laughs> to take that. <laughs> but it, it just makes so much sense, you know, and it would be so helpful so, to the community. I know why you want to take that. Why? Because it's an awesome yeah. space. Yeah. <laughs> it's an awesome space. Yeah. So, so moving forward through here. Let's see. Well, I'm almost done with this section. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so this has got the question here about bike lanes. So obviously, bike lanes came up. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the ones I need to get permission to for. Oh, okay. that's a reformer. Really, yeah. That's a reformer picture. The, yeah. Yep. Hideousness. Yes. Trying to bike in town. Um, so I think the question of bike lanes is one that has to be answered. Um, so this, this goes through what the requirements are from an engineering and safety point of view about what kind of, what amount of space you need for them. You need at least five feet. It really should be six. 
but you could legally get in away with five. Um, but even at five, you can't get them in down here by flat street. There is not enough room. Uh, the only option really being to take down the latches. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think oh, oh, let's do that. Domain. No. Domain. <laughs> I don't you think that's our So there's actually just physically not enough room. The buildings are are not far enough apart to to have enough room for the traffic. But if the art museum is building. Yeah, but it isn't just that building. It's the other one too, and it's the really lovely historic one with the pitched roof that everyone loves. Oh, that's such a pretty building. building. Yeah, see? That's a pretty building. <laughs> yeah, so that, that whole little piece in there is, is, is constrained. And then, like I said, that the, the widths vary. So this part that's blue in here, this is between Elliot and High, this is the wide piece. There's, there's a lot of room there. Um, if you were, particularly if you get rid of the uh, parking on one side. One side, two sides, mm -hmm. fix the, narrow down the lanes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of room that could be theoretically pulled out of here. This is, this gets very wide. This, the buildings are 75 feet apart mm -hmm. um, at their widest point there. So there's a lot of room. But then this narrows up. Um, so most of it, most of the rest of it is right around 42 wow. to maybe 48-ish mm -hmm. feet. Um, so that means you can put, the, if you got rid of the parking, you could put it in the bike lanes, but you're not going to get wider sidewalks. So it's an either-or choice, mm -hmm. really. Um, hmm. Who are you going to upset? Well, it, it's really what makes the most sense in terms of the benefits and the use of the space. Um, and to think about that. And you, because, I mean, in my mind, if you can't get the bike lanes all the way through, um, then it, I think their effectiveness is, is, is significantly and it would require also eliminating basically all the on-street parking. You would be able to get a little bit of on-street parking in this block with, you know, so there could be some, probably, the, you know, some drop-off from accessible handicapped spaces, but it pretty much means no parking as well um, to do it. So I think that points to the importance of the um, path as, um, as being the obvious better option to bike actual designated bike lanes. On Main Street. Well, I think, I think too that I, in an ideal world, it would be great to have some sort of big bike lanes on Main Street. But where's the bigger benefit? And I think having a wider sidewalk where you could have more of the street, mm -hmm. um, you know, like cafes or so, you know, mm -hmm. more room for that kind of stuff. Because there's still the topographical challenges of downtown, there's still the truck traffic mm -hmm. that might make it feel unsafe for people to bike. Yeah. So it's probably still going to be the skilled serious bike. It's serious never bike going to be, uh, even with designated bike lanes, it's not going to be a place that you're going to bike as a casual or recreational mm -hmm. cyclist. Mm -hmm. Is there a way of sharing the lane um, with, you know, being more aware as a, as a driver? I mean, you can sign it and shared. designate, you know, do the things for it. And I mean, I think that's, yeah, that's the people who are biking now. I mean, I think as much as you can get on your bike and act like you are a vehicle. Maybe. I observe <laughs> yeah. people all the time on Putney Road driving their cars in the bike lane. Yeah. Like, as it's a passing lane or whatever, and it's just like, wow. Yeah, it makes, gives me, like, no hope for bike lanes in that. <laughs> you know, people are just going to get hurt, and it's because drivers don't share the road with bicyclists yeah. and they don't know how, they're not educated anymore or something, I'm not sure mm. what happened. You know? There's a way to create barriers and so and so it's not just paint, because yeah, cyclists don't, it's don't feel yeah. safe when it's no, just I paint. mean, I could see yeah. someone like thinking and going and yeah. trying to go move over and hitting a biker. That's exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that. It's going to get better on the happy road all the time. Yes, it does. Yeah. So. They will have an off street. So the other... Mm. That's, this, that's detached. The other implication of of adding the bike lanes, um, it requires reconfiguration of the travel lanes. And right now, the way the travel lanes are set up, there's space for cars to line up at the intersections, right? Stacking room. So when the light turns, how many cars can you basically get parked at a red light in in that block? And while you you can definitely narrow the lanes. Doing that because of how it does that thing where there's a you know you think of the, the two straight up and down with south lanes and then there's that lane that's for turning and 
essentially at one at one intersection it's a left hand turn one way and then you get down to the other. So. But that transitions over the course of the block. So it's sort of like it makes this diagonal, mm -hmm. and where it makes that diagonal, it's making extra space. So the lanes, it's like there's, um, there's it's not really like there's three lanes, um, except at the actual ends, right, at each end of the block. In the middle, there's like this extra half space. But it's enough that you can stack cars up, right, at the intersection. And if you narrow the lanes down, um, that's possible. But then you're going to put less cars in them when the red light turns red. So that could actually be part of a congestion problem in downtown Baltimore too. So these are like the factors that you have to weigh back and forth against. You know, what, which, which, how much space to give to the cars, how much, whether to give space to bicycles, whether to give space to pedestrians, you know, and how much. So there's a, it's, it's a fairly complicated set of um, factors that um, influence that. You know, we can say, this is how much space there is. Um, and then it's a really a question of, of allocating that space. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can sort of make that, that, that sort of choice thing clear uh, in this story map format that you really, you, you, you know, you have to balance off and weigh the, and prioritize because it's not you get 100% of everything. And that would be the same with the parking lot park question. You know, how much green space can we add into these parking lots? How much pedestrian uh, walkway area can we add into the parking lots while still keeping enough parking spaces? Um, and if you want to eliminate, you know, an entire parking lot, say Preston to make a park or Harmony to make a park, then, you know, what does that mean in terms of the overall supply? Or you want to get rid of one or two lanes of parking on Main Street, you know. So it's a supply question, too. So. I think we're going to have a lot of ideas in here for um, improvements, but they're not all achievable altogether, right? It's, it's choices. So we went through that, and then a little brief thing will be one for Elliott Street, one for Flat Street, uh, some discussion of the intersection. We've got thoughts on that from the Charette, the rail trail, this whole discussion of parking, weighing off the choices that would go here, and then programming without the extra M, and um, <laughs> <laughs> the next steps in the credit. So that's the story map. So those are the kind of things that we can do with it. Um, I think it's a fairly engaging and interesting way to present the downtown plan. So. The real question is, we've got a certain amount of time and a certain amount of budget left, um, and we want to focus those uh, time, those hours and dollars on the things that are um, the most important to you all. So um, I think my sense is that Harmony is on that list. Um, what were what were you? Well, there's a question of whether to do more <laughs> more more around. Um, the, this building around the municipal building area. Um, that was one of the areas we could look at in more detail. Um, the question of looking at High Grove in more detail from a stormwater perspective, that's the one place that Amy thought there was some reasonable opportunity to put in some green stormwater infrastructure. So that's the parking lot up at the... Mm -hmm. the huh. Well, that would be nice because I think that space has some more than and you had asked about the depot riverfront property mm -hmm. too, about how what level of detail mm -hmm. we were going to go into for that. I think a lot of people what they wanted to see there was they wanted to see more than just that one picnic table. They wanted to see, you know, like the youth talked about a concert kind of venue. Mm -hmm. I think the access to the water. I, I like the idea of um, first of all, my thoughts on her harmony is that there is some work that's been done. Um, so I'm not sure, I, I don't, and I know it's not full park, but there's been <laughs> ideas in the past for full parks there. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's been some work done. I'm not sure that it needs to go further because it'll show up in here. I'm like, imagining the stuff on the shrub. Mm -hmm. um, High Grove lot, I think that seems pretty exciting if there's a stormwater um, opportunity yeah, there. Yeah, that seemed to be the most likely candidate for any sort of... Um, 
strong wire. As soon as you got much lower than that, um, Amy thinks that you have infiltration and potential pollution problems that you don't actually want to infiltrate water. Mm -hmm. So green stormwater infrastructure is actually not that great of an idea for most of downtown. Oh, wow. The municipal center, um, while I would love to see some stuff done, I think the town's agreement with to kind of look at housing here with Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust, I just, it could be useful to have something that's kind of dealing with the front lawn or even the parking lot, but I'm, I'm not sure. I guess I'm, I'd probably want to ask around to see if that would be useful. Um, Depot Street and the riverfront, I mean, I do think with the new bridge and Bridge Street changing and the you know future bike head bridge, I think that a lot of people have been talking about that as kind of this trails hub. And so I would like, I, I think seeing something that's um, a more programmed space or a more active space than mm -hmm. just what's there now would be beneficial. It would be nice also if this is going to go, this is going to be public to have just all the constraints articulated and mm -hmm. not that people would necessarily read it. But, but yeah. The explanation as to why you can't access the river from that side. Mm -hmm. yeah. As much as I'm a lover of outdoor recreation and stuff like that, um, I'd love a, like a little extra emphasis on any proposed change or improvement that can have benefits year-round. So like, you know, widening sidewalks and things. People walk on those just as much December through March and April, but like are people are definitely biking summer. less during our bad six months of the year. People are definitely lounging on the lawns and picnic tables less half of the year. Mm -hmm. So improvements that benefits year round. I feel like in, a, in our climate compared to Florida, mm -hmm. an extra push. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, on that, I don't know if, if anyone put in there too, like you know, where to have lunch in public in the winter. Yeah, There's river garden. Maybe that's the only place. Yeah. <laughs> but it might be kind of interesting. And also I saw a lot of programming, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> thoughts on programming. And like, even with Pliny Park, what would programming look like there? Like, like an active, an activated space somehow. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see that. And also down on the river. Like if it was a, if there was a stage and there was a concert going on, I feel like Harmony can offer basically all of that except for access to the river. You know, but our access to the river is almost non-existent anyhow, or not really possible. It seems. You know, I feel like Harmony has like so much potential. And so Whatever much happened to the Harmony Park that was being that's, that's created? That's there. That green space. <laughs> <got paid green. laughs> Well, no, oh, there was still the green space oh. on the back of the house. There was, right. and there was going to be a stage and, and stuff. I don't know if they were not successful fundraising. I don't really okay. know. Because they went to the sort of ribbon cutting yeah. of that, and then was that a race house initiative? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It was. Okay. They were going to partner with DBA, um, but I'm not really sure. It wasn't a town yeah. initiative. Well, I think the impact of the Hinsdale Bridge change and the pedestrian bike bridge is big and and you addressed that some at the summary meeting mm -hmm. in terms of the yeah. impact of the flow on Main Street but I I, you know, I I do think that that and so that's focus. actually it's the change there's going to be money mm -hmm. you know there's that's actually probably something we should have further follow-up conversation on I'm not really that up on where the project is what the town's current Positions and level of engagement and such and that. On his side. On the okay. Yeah, we should, so we should just do it. That's my question. Is like that seems all fine and dandy, but who's going to be paying to maintain it? Like, are we going to still have access to that bridge? That's the intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not a hundred percent. Well, the bridges are staying. Yeah, but um, I mean, like, are we going to be able to utilize them? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, definitely. The question of who's going to pay is still is very much up in the air. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. last I knew, my understanding was that. We weren't sure if we're going to be able to access them because. Right. That's pretty definite. There's going yeah, to be. It's pretty a, definite. Yeah, there's yeah. pedestrian. Okay. Bike. Good. There's a there's a, a group that's a committee that's really trying to make that sure that it does happen. Not 
that that bridge is not forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so whatever, whatever planning work has been, whatever. I just need an update. Yeah. Where that is. Last meeting that some of us talked about, um, now it, on the surface seems like it's adding another request from you or requirement, but like a single page or poster mm -hmm. that's just like shows, yep. it won't show it in detail, but just like just catches people and just wows everyone with the, all the proposals. So potential. I didn't go into, so the story map is obviously the primary product, mm -hmm. but my intention is to have a short executive summary that would pull from some of the text. I mean, I don't really see that this is a, it, it's just readapting what's the content that we've got, really. So that you will have a paper thing that you can distribute. And then that at the li at the bottom here, when we have that project, the project list piece, I would envision that that would also be <coughs> part of that you know, okay. printed version. And then um, you have requested a, a sort of a poster map type thing. And I think that's, you know, Basically, I'm going to use the template that I use for the charrette um, mm -hmm. mapping, so that's, that exists. And then the illustrations and graphics that are going into here can be used on that and, you know, sort of highlight the ideas that way. So I, it's, it's, still it's, it's still, it's doable, Great. and I, um, I think that it will complement this quite well. Great. Yep. So... I don't think you got a straight answer. No, <laughs> we have a lot of priorities. <laughs> so, if I was to get an architect and a landscape architect to work on like one more thing, what's the one more thing? I guess it's the the core of the question. Like, what area is the most important? Hensdale Bridge, if it's actually going to be like uh, accessible to the public once. Bridge, Bridge Street mm -hmm. Depot, Street area. Whoa. Well, what? If we take the bikes off of Main Street, or we take the idea of bikes mm -hmm. safely off Main Street, then where do they go? Well, that's the path idea, which I I we um I don't have that stuff in here yet, but but that's we do have sketched out we do have that stuff sketched okay. out, mm -hmm. and it's basically the series of improvements through the parking lots, and then some roadway improvements and sidewalk improvements to connect them. So it's using your existing spaces, um, but making a designated pathway that goes through them. Okay, this and the big is problem is getting from Flat to LA, right? Yes, you, know, you end up at the transportation center and, and the stairs or the elevators if it works, and you know, using the, basically using the transportation center as the. Oh, I guess you could drive to the transportation center. Yeah. Probably not. Oh. Really. Let me see. Yeah, I've never tried. <laughs> Well, I think there's still going to be users of on-street bicycling. It's just, yeah, it's going to be more of the share of the road kind of thing rather than a dedicated bike lane. Yeah, I mean, I guess you'd, you'd have yeah. the you know choice to try to make the skip hill go further around too. But you know, we're getting. I think there's ways to make using the stairs with your bicycle a bit easier there if the stairs were changed on the transportation center, which is sort of one of the things we talked about the Shrevet, was opportunities to make the stairway a bit more of a, um, a little less of a facility just for the users of the transportation center and a bit more of a... Um, like a public passageway. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, there's like almost enough room over there to do like a big spiral going down for passengers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we looked at a lot of fun skateboarders. Fun, yeah. you know, yeah. options. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And you get alongside it with your bike, and you push on this little pedal on the track, and it pops up, and then it pushes you uh, up. You sit on your bike, you've got your foot down on this pedal that's on the track, and it pushes you and your bike up the hill. Whoa. 
Whoa. Where is this? Whoa. I think it was a, you have to YouTube this. I'll have to I'm find this. Um, it's like, you did not show that. Like I didn't show it. It scares me of like being on a hoverboard. I don't see it working in the snow. A broken arm. Yeah. It reminds me of like the, what is that called? Like the magic carpet that it's you as well? Yeah. 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 It was like, it was one of those things that looked like it was, you're going to spend forever trying to fix it. <laughs> it looked like it had such maintenance issues, but they were very happy people going up and down the <laughs> going up this thing. It didn't go very fast, so, you know, worst case scenario, you just put your feet down and you would be fine, like, you know, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. So, have we given you what you want? What, 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 what more can we give you? So, well, I, what I'm hearing is that the work we've got, perhaps done on Harmony, stuff we've done on Preston will probably be fine. We're going to throw more design time at the project. We should be looking down bridge, depot, the intersection area. Does that seem mm -hmm. like a consensus of the group? Yeah, I, I, how, is there going to be any effect on the, of the BMAC project on, on your design, or is that all entirely not connected to that? The BMAC project? The museum. The museum, the museum project. Um, we have, we had a conversation with Danny during the short time period. We have an understanding of what it is that they are looking at. Um, They've gone public. Yes, yeah. And, um. I think it lines up fine with what we were okay. looking at on yeah. Bridge Street, um, and yeah, so I don't see there being an issue. It would be nice if they move the building back and give you 10 more feet of sidewalk, but, <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, Why not? That's yeah. a reasonable yeah. request. It is still yeah. conceptual. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it's the building is sitting Why sort of in the Why don't you put in your design that they do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. we, can, we can suggest I like, that. I like that idea. Is, is that going to help with the bike lane then? Except um, we still it wouldn't solve the problem. Yeah, because we still have It wouldn't building. continue the problem, you know, as much. It would give you a little more sidewalk room there. It's actually really interesting because you're, you're, it's, it's so, it changes so much right there. You're like super tight right in front of the latches. And then that bridge is incredibly wide over the yeah. west end. Yeah. And right. that crosswalk is ridiculous. It's like, yeah, it's, a huge it's like 80 feet too. across that crosswalk. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it's crazy wide, how mm -hmm. wide it is. So there's a lot of opportunity to improve the pedestrian experience on the bridge or, and or bicyclist experience on the bridge. But it just crunches right in where the buildings come in. They're just, they're just and obviously have for a very long time been that close to each other. So, there you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for So, I think you probably will plan to see me maybe again in February. Just okay. Just the timeline. Um, that's the whole thing. So, um, it's 8.26. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, how do we feel about going on for another 20 minutes? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good too. Everybody good? <laughs> um, how about how about another 10 minutes? <laughs> I think we have Aaron here, so we should. Yeah, at least no, we hear definitely from we Aaron. definitely want to do the. I think we're a lot. You know, we don't. Um, we have a meeting in about two <laughs> two three weeks. Right. So we can do some of that other stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. so if we do. So if we just Aaron do West West Brattleboro, yeah. and then and then H, yeah. which is not going to take too long at all, um, and then the drink. Is that yes. good for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, Aaron, why don't you just explain? Do you, I mean, you want to give a little context? I think yeah. Talking about first, and then I'll um, kind of sure. So so. Um, this is the big picture planning efforts, and just to, we we just wanted to bring you guys all up to date with what we've been doing in West Brattleboro. Erin and I originally we have been on the West Brattleboro Association for a long period of time, um, and we have been talking for a while about trying to find um, a third place or a community space for the village of West Brattleboro. Um, that's been going on for years and years and years. And then post Irene, 
Melrose Terrace. You, we've talked about that before, that, that those building, a lot of those buildings are designated, 11 of them have been designated to come down. They're going to redesign um, that uh, space, the bank space. They're actually going to dig out the brook from when it was filled in, when the buildings were built. Um, so it's going to become less of a flood zone. It's not entirely free of flood zone, but it's some, there's some designation that's going to shift. And last year, two years ago, Chris Hart came to the WBA saying she had a plan for what to do with the remaining buildings in Melrose Terrace. So this past year, Aaron started a project to focus community attention on that space with the idea of it potentially becoming um, a third place for the village of West Power. So that's what that's working with me. Right, and we're looking at it also as, I mean, when we were looking at third places, which we were incredibly unsuccessful at finding over the course of about five years, um, uh, what we've really been focusing on is economic development for West Brattleboro and like how to create a there there. Um, we watch business after business close or business after business try to sell their property and we've been um, not uh, successful in selling very large uh, buildings. America, the Mattress Company, American Traders, um, now Chelsea. Chelsea Royal, I mean, there's a bunch, I mean, in Dallin Chalet is arguably like also in a place that needs to um, have a new new vision. Um, so this project, um, it's called Waterways, um, is like I <coughs> said, a community engagement project around this particular plot of land at Melrose Terrace. Um, so the grant that we got was through the Community Engagement Lab um, and I'm a teaching artist and that was, they were really focusing on how teaching artists can gather uh, the community and engage them in creative place making effectively. And um, so that's, in June we're going to have a series of three events that, that, that does exactly that. The other focus they had in this grant, and certainly a focus for us as well, is that Melrose Terrace is a great example of how the climate is affecting people living along the waterway. And the whetstone is really arguably like the, the vital spine of West Brattleboro. Um, but it is also quite dangerous. And so um, part of what we're doing is bringing the community in relationship to the waterway and understanding better about how it's moving and how it will move and, and how we could be good stewards of that um, waterway. We've been talking to other organizations, Connecticut River Conservancy, the Vermont River Conservancy, um, more recently, I'm going to mess it up at the watershed, um, Division of Maria Marie Caduto. Yep. Yes. Right, so I just went to that and how uh, the water quality. We're working with um, Bonneville Environmental Education Center. We're bringing in the academy school and engaging all ages around like how do we how do we really shepherd this particular piece of land and this particular part of the whetstone, bring it back to health and also because there's going to be land there that won't be built on and there'll be buildings that will rise up out of the floodway once all this work is done along that stretch. Um, how do we use this space as public space going forward? So that's kind of the long vision. And the, building, the buildings that are going to remain there potentially could be used for some kind of income generating that it's not quite clear how, but the idea is ultimately to get this into an actual productive community space where it would be a location that would then attract people to revitalize the town, the, the village, a little bit more of the And its location, <laughs> its location next to the village center is really key. Um, and there's also other conversations about how to get kids from like Tri Park on their bike to downtown. Like that's kind of a longer vision. Mm -hmm. And how is this a stopping point on that? And instead of having them on Route 9, which is just crazy, to have them back there 
So um, just starting to look at all the chunks, I walked the whetstone with um, Kathy Erfer, and it was really interesting to kind of see how people are using the whetstone in different areas where you could see where there were swimming holes, where there were fishing holes, and this, and, but also seeing how there are some really flat areas that could accommodate a lot of walking and biking. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a, a big thing that we're really kind of getting our, sinking our, our heels into in June. Do you have any set dates yet? Or? Right now, yeah, I mean, I, we have to check with a couple of our partners to make sure, but right now we're looking at June 7th, 14th, and 21st. They're all Sundays. Okay. Um, the first one will be around historical uh, storytelling and from the perspective of Abenaki elders in the community, mm -hmm. also some of the elders that lived right there in Melrose Terrace and loved it, so hearing stories and mm -hmm. stories from people that grew up along the Whetstone in West Brattleboro and their relationship to the waterway. Um, and, and then we'll also draw out stories from the people that, other people that come and document those. And the second event is more environmental. We'll have people from the Vermont River Conservancy and Connecticut River Conservancy as well as Bonneville Environmental Education Center. And the idea right now is that there'll be different um, kind of walking tours around there with educational components and how to schedule. And then it's also then going to result in working with two ceramic artists that are local. And that information that education people get will then be able to take a tile um, and be able to choose some aspect of the waterway there, that area, and draw how they envision the health coming back to that area. And then those tiles can be used in uh, at Beak, maybe at Academy School. So there's a way of like visually connecting people to this site. Because um, one of the ideas Chris Hart had, um, and something we left out, is that the idea right now is that that, might, that Brattleboro Housing Partnerships might create another organization, like a nonprofit, that would then hold this land once it's purchased back by a dollar, with a dollar back from FEMA. And so th she's really looking HUD. at. Oh, yeah. oh, it's HUD. 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 Sorry. FEMA's paying for the right. regeneration, HUD. so HUD yeah. owns the school. HUD owns the building, so. Mm. Okay, right. Um, so how those those buildings, though those the remaining buildings can be used, and maybe they can be used as classrooms as well, so that they have on-site education, tying in other educational things. And then the third uh, the third event is more movement based and uh, immediate experiencing, and then we'll also get the artwork that's taken from the first two events, and they'll come to that event as well. And so it'll be our culminating event, and. In that event is where we'll start to plant seeds of the community voicing what they'd love to see yeah. there, but after having lots of experience. So that's where Sounds we are Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Excited. Yeah. It's really neat. There it is. Great. Oh, no, I was going to say, is there anything that we can do to help at this point, or just kind of stay tuned? and? We're looking for really beautiful maps, okay. and and actually, we'd love to work with a map maker, but someone maybe that does hand drawn maps, oh. not electronic, because mm -hmm. we're we're really thinking about this the the visual campaign mm -hmm. of this, so that you know I always feel like we have to go back to the hand, and that gets people to realize oh I I'm I'm included yeah. There's something that, if it's digital to digital, there's a, a remoteness. Um, so hand-drawn maps would be really beautiful. Did you ever see the Whetstone Brook uh, flyer? I'm not, I don't know that it's a hand-drawn map, but M, she tapes at BCTV. M Richards did a lot of art on it. Let me get you one before you leave. I right. don't know if it's a hand-drawn map, but she did a lot of artwork around it. Cool. I'd love to see that. So I'll get you one.
We, uh, we I'll all, ask around to see if I can find. That would be great. We also want to get the word out so that people will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we'll be doing, we'll also be doing a lot of outreach um, in the communities like Westgate and Tri Park and um, some of the other communities in West Brattleboro. We're going to be doing outreach. Mm -hmm. So it would be fantastic to have, and we're going to set it up so there's sort of a list where you can sign up to be part of the outreach, and we'll do outreach events. Because it's the only way we're really going to get everyone mm -hmm. to feel like they're involved and mm -hmm. invited. So um, so that that's where we're going to love to have others come with us on those events. Yeah, like yourselves, it'd be great. Because people will have questions. It'll be an experience, it won't be a meeting. Um, but then we'll have time afterwards, like a Q&A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? It sounds like that yeah, village fine. area needs some enthusiastic, enlivening creativity, so whatever we can help, Thanks. let us know. No, I'm really excited about it. I feel like you folks have like really thought about everything. You know, I feel like you're like approaching it at all the different angles and like thinking about everybody. I really, I really dig that. I'm super excited to see, you know, cool. it come to fruition. <laughs> cool. So. And we'll have more to share with you. As soon as we firm up those dates, we'll have and we want to work on a flyer right away and a beautiful poster. I mean, something like yeah. someone would want that poster to frame that poster mm -hmm. and they would keep it forever. That's the level <laughs> Do you know, of a poster. Do you know Briny Cribs? Mm -hmm. Briny? She's from the like Dummerston Putney area. You should check out her art. She, she's not a map drawer, but she's good enough to be able to do something I don't want to take away from you. No, 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 I, no, that's she also great. Does, she does like a lot of like botanicals and then like nature stuff Perfect. also. She does like a lot of like uh, it's very similar to like a Audubon Society art. Oh, huh. She's like better than Audubon though. She's <laughs> mind blowing. Okay. Yeah, so check her. Brian. I don't know how you spell that. <laughs> and how do you spell her last name? I think it's C R I B B S. Brian. E. Let me see. Right. I want to check it out. Oh, she's so good. She's one way. Oh yeah, B R I O N Y. B R I O N Y. Moro, M-O-R-R-O-W dash crib, C-R-I-B-B-S. Okay, great. Her, her art is mind-blowing, and it's like, I think it's like, what, what you guys are describing, I'm like, okay. she's the one. Because <laughs> I, I, I mean, and we're also envisioning like the layers, the overlays of, of the different outcomes that yeah. are, because this is, it, about the environment, it's mm -hmm. about, it's also about like the people that live along the whetstone or generally that's the cheapest land so that when there are events, the people that actually need the most help and mm -hmm. so, you know, so there's a, a lot about um, social equity, mm -hmm. there's about economic development, there's creating a there there, anyway, so I want to be able to have the map also show those things. And show the different populations, and show the different kinds of uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. so. Great, thanks for that. If any other ones, any other artists come to mind, it'd be great to work with someone local. Yeah. All righty. Anything else? Did you want to talk weather? about weather? Oh <laughs> yeah. So, um, until such time as it does, it's not going to snow anymore. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea for us to set aside the Wednesday following the first Monday of every month, mm -hmm. so that we know if it's snowing on Monday that we will just meet that Wednesday. Does okay. everybody feel like they sort of willing so and able the to do one. that? So it's the it, it yeah. won't always necessarily be the first Wednesday because it could be that second yeah it could be the yeah, second just the Wednesday so following that so it's first the Wednesday Monday. following the first yep. Monday so yep. if you would just clear your schedules until May so next meeting's the sixth. or take a look and make sure yeah, yeah. Like if you've got a conflict just let us know yeah. so, yep. so that so that this way we don't have to do what we did to do this time which mm -hmm. is sort of run around and pull everybody and all that it, we just know that if we if we cancel the meeting for Monday it hap it will happen on that Wednesday so like the two days after it would right. that's easy right is that good? Yeah. I'm going to miss a number of meetings in a row. Um, 
the Monday meeting. So if it snows, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if there's any, you know, if you ever need a vote or something, if I can participate by phone. You can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll let you know if we need a quorum. Great. All right, cool. Um, so, anything else? No? All right. Happy holidays, everybody. Yes. Oh, yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And, and I need a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. <laughs> I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Interesting meeting. I apologize yeah. for.